As you guys know, chat, I did something worse than posting cringe. I started YouTube drama. I made a video where I was shitting on this dude's other videos and his gameplay footage. And he was pretty upset. He took it pretty seriously. So, and you're not innocent either, chat. You guys had a lot of goofs and gaffs and giggles at this guy's expense. So, I figured no one wants YouTube drama. We're not trying to propagate YouTube drama because that's cringe, as we said. But he made a video where he like wanted to add some context and like clarify a bunch of things and says that we misrepresented him. So I feel like we deserve to at least hear him out. Just hear him out what he has to say and not just, you know, like roast him and shit on him. Like, let's just hear him out, you know, like let's try and connect and understand him on like a human level. So anyway, I guess well, let's just watch his video. So like, I haven't watched it yet, but I watched the first 30 seconds and I kind of skimmed it really quick. And I was like, okay, it's pretty obvious that he's gonna go through my entire video and provide context and shame me. So I figured well, let's just hear him out. Let's try not to be like, you know, because at the end of the day, it's a video game that we disagree on. So let's just hear him out, see what he has to say. And yeah, that'll be the thing. So he made this video about a week ago and I was like, I don't want to watch it, but like, I should. I feel like I should. He, like, he deserves that at least. That, you know, he can, like, explain himself, okay? So that we're going to be coming into this. We're not going to be judgmental. Let's just hear him out, okay? I'm not one to usually react to YouTube drama or things of that nature. Oh, hold on. I can hear nothing but crows because of the fucking game. My thoughts on... Like, this guy definitely deserves to be mad at me. Like, regardless. <laughs> regardless, right or wrong, like, this guy 100% deserves to be mad at me. And let that be the end of that. I try to take any criticism of my content in stride, and granted, I'm sure I could do a better job of that at the end of the day, I have to admit. But a viewer of mine showed me this video recently, and initially I wasn't going to respond to it, but after taking time to- I'm gonna try not to pause as much too, because this is a long one, this is like 29 minutes. The first being how out of context some of the clips used for my channel were in his video. Sure, I admit there are definitely a few questionable takes here and there that I can see how some people I like the music choice, with, especially looking back now at some of my Elden Ring content. But there are a few things that I want to clear up within the video to make sure people understand the points I was trying to get across, because the video definitely paints a lot of it in a bad light. Whereas if he just let the video play a little bit longer instead of just shit on me the entire time, maybe he could have seen what I meant. Although I have to agree, there are some solid points that I'll address within this video that he gets across himself as well. The second reason I really feel like I have to address this video though is because the- Yeah, fucking, it's, it's like I'm the meme where it's like the guy's vein bulging out of his head being like, don't pause it every five seconds. But yeah, no, he's right. I did shit on him the entire video. Now he says that I took him out of context and I misrepresented him. That remains to be seen, I guess, because to be honest, I don't really remember. I didn't actually edit the rough draft of the video. But I have a pretty good memory, and I don't think I do, because I honestly, I don't try to fucking take people out of context when you show clips of stuff. But like, anytime you do take clips of someone, they're always gonna say like, Oh, it, it took them out of context. If you had played it one more second, it would have had a totally different meaning and whatever. Like, I don't intentionally try to misrepresent people for like a gag, you know? But I do know how I like, I paraphrase things and I try to summarize arguments and videos to make it more digestible for myself. So especially if I like miss the point or if I'm wrong, that does like, you know, make me come across like I'm misrepresenting someone. So I can understand that. And also he kind of nailed it on the head. Like he's, he's willing, he's open to criticism. So instead of just like shitting on him and like pulling his leg and like yanking his crank, let's actually try to give him like positive, useful criticism. Cause that's kind of the irony here. One of my biggest complaints and pet peeves about lazy game critics is that they don't, a lot of the fucking criticism is useless and condescending and based like, a, it's like, it's not very helpful. It's not good criticism. It's lazy criticism, right? And the ironic thing is I became a lazy critic of critics. Like I basically just shit on them without actually giving like useful criticism. So it's kind of ironic, I guess you could say. So yeah, we should just hear about this. Uh, here is extra context, you know? Do not yank his crank. You never heard that expression, Chef? <laughs> not planning to. Let's not yank his crank. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we're on the same page. The way this guy reacted to my videos was just utter toxicity. Like, I get it. I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I think this guy blew a gasket watching my Elden Ring content and his blood pressure was probably like <laughs> in the 200s. 
I was afraid he was going to start turning green and go on Hulk mode and start smashing monitors and shit. Wait, whoa, 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 Is this... Is this V-Sweat? Or who is this? With the fucking pink haired... Is this someone in the Elden Ring community? <laughs> Wait, isn't this... Isn't... Oh, what the fuck's his name? It starts with a V, right? Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but that's perfect. That's... This is actually what he should do. No, he should totally insult me. I hate people that just like pretend like they take the high road like i fucking insulted him i was making all this fucking shit talk he should absolutely shit talk me that's 100 percent what he should do i love that that's so good <laughs> but like okay so like obviously yeah i'm a really animated streamer and it's fucking you know like a lot of fucking streamers do that they like act really animated and energetic like wow guys this is so crazy you know oh my god i have so much heartburn but like why do i do that do I do it because I'm desperately pining for views or attention or for money? No. <laughs> the thing is, I make more in one day at work than I do in an entire year on Twitch, dead ass. So like, I, I, why do I stream then, right? If it's so time consuming and shit. In my day to day life, I am expected to have a very high degree of professionalism on what I do. And I'm also part of like associations and societies and fraternities. I'm just a regular guy, okay? I'm like, when I'm not streaming, I am not energetic. I'm just a boring guy. I fuck it. I'm worried. I'm like, oh my God, I got to set up my appointment with my insurance guy and my tax guy. And I got to contribute to this charity. And I got to fucking meet you with the sales rep someday and all this shit. And I travel a lot for work, right? So act so... But I'm a fucking, I'm a rural Canadian guy. I'm from a town of 400 people. I like to smoke, I like to swear, I like to drink, and I like to fuck, all right? I'm a simple man. <laughs> I'm a simple kind of man. So I don't, I, I like that is part of who I am, but I can't be like that in my day-to-day -day life and in my career. So streaming is just a way for me to blow off steam. I do it because I like it. And it allows me to express that side of myself, albeit in a more exaggerated fucking bingy manner, right? So like, that's why I'm like acting like I'm going off the rails. That's reason number one, why the video was like that. Reason number two is I was shit based. I was like 10 beers deep. So we went a little, you know, we went too far. We went a little bit too hard on him. So yeah. Is that lazy peon? I don't know. Like this is like six viewers. Like it's gotta be someone we know, right? Who the hell is, like, the curious case of, like, who smashed up their monitor? Does anyone know who it is? Mode starts smashing his monitor and shit. <laughs> Hulk mode activate! Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, this is supposed to be a serious video. <laughs> I just forgot I had the green filter. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to try and just get through this kind of quickly. Ado, let's get right into the response. Here, let's take a quick little mental break. You guys want to watch the quick reviews? I, pr I promise I won't be a super mega drunk. I'm going to try not to pause too much. Every single time he says like one word, but like this guy's videos are fucking awful. A bit, bit unfair. My bit unfair. Videos. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be much of a mental break for you, my guy. He just rambles on and on in the most fucking generic garden variety, exasperated gamer fucking like personality. <laughs> this is his response to the comments calling him a Yeah, definitely unfair. That was an asshole way to open the video for sure. I think I was a bit flustered watching his Elden Ring videos. I haven't watched any of his other ones, so I can't really make judgment on his video quality. A dipshit because he said a hundred things. Now this thing he's already gotten flack for, this Radon video, so like he already knows. And like like he said at the start of the video, like he knows he's gotten shit and he's gotten some things wrong in hindsight with his Elden Ring videos, like totally. And like hindsight's 2020. And what what content creator doesn't do that? No matter how factual you can be, you always look back at your old videos and you're like, fuck, like I know so much more now. But like, I'm like, he's already aware of the dangers of posting like knee jerk videos. Like the Radon video he made before he beat the game. So like, he understands that now. There's no need to like harp on that. Things wrong in a fucking 10 minute video. <laughs> oh, I remember this video. I'm not gonna lie, I still think this clip is just- I was gonna say I love this VCR overlay, but uh, I think I actually have this. I think I used it in my Anderson video. I'm on the hunt for some good VCR overlays. Hilarity to this day. 
And yeah, I know you guys got. He takes it in stride, though. He takes it in stride. Props for him. Funny and to laugh at, not to really get mad at. I don't know. Let's just take a look at the fire giant. Let's do that. There's a lot of reasons to hate fire giant. Fighting giant enemies can be a bitch. People just don't like swatting at a guy's ankle, you know? I actually agree with this. Any giant within the Soul series, in my opinion, is pretty garbage. Because it always results in the same wonky camera angles, the big guy stomping around, you trying to roll through his feet. You 100% need Torrent to fight Fire Giant, you guys. You heard it here. If you don't use Torrent, it's literally ah, impossible. Ah, literally. So big me. Part, I will definitely say that Torrent being used during the Fire Giant, especially the first portion of the fight, probably worked against me rather than with me, and it was definitely part of the reason that I had so much trouble with him. Yes. The only thing that you could do is just hit list the boss. The only way you could fight Fire Giant is to play on Torrent. What's up, Coop? How you doing? God, I think I see this guy turning green a little bit. <laughs> You're literally staring at your own character, just riding around on lockdown on a horseback. Like, what do you? Yeah, the camera. Oh, it's, it's the camera's fault. Now I've try not to pause. Try not to pause. Down in the comments, but I just let us hear him out. Don't see how pointing the camera up at Fire Giant would help in any way, shape, or form here. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but if I'm pointing the camera up at him, then I can't see what his feet are doing, and I can't see where I'm attacking. I probably couldn't see much of anything except for the fire giant's enormous mushroom tip. <laughs> and of course, I want a piece of that. But maybe I should have pointed the camera up. Seriously, though, in terms of helping with the boss, I really don't think that's actually the funny. Up would help that much. I don't know. Differing opinions, but the camera is definitely a problem during this. I yeah, I still disagree. Like I still like if you look at the up at fire giant, you can see a lot of them. I have harped up or harped on this a lot. You can see a lot of Fire Giant if you just point the camera up. If you're just trying to look at his feet because you're worried about the feet attacks, he only really has two stomp attacks. And both of them, he like it's a long telegraph where he lifts his foot high in the air. You will see it. The other thing is with Fire Giant, all his attacks have unique audio cues. So even if you can't see it, you can like learn the audio cues too. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, whatever. I get it. Like, like I said, giant fights, like people just don't like them because it's always just this dumb shit where you're just like staring at this Colossus and you can't see all of them at once. So I can understand that. And then like he says, he can't like see the feet when he's trying to attack them. You should look up, dodge the attack, hit the foot, and then just like go about it that way. Typically nowadays, I just stay under him and I just dodge based on the audio cues. But yeah, I mean, you can just not like fire giant. But I really do think that you should at least try just free camming and pointing it up. I swear to God, it is so helpful. This fight, I don't really care what anyone else says. The mushroom chip joke was fucking funny though. <laughs> you got hit. Still though, once you warm up- Yeah, I rage quit. <laughs> wow. That was such an early roll by me. Now this clip right here actually had me fucking dying. Like, he's so mad that I'm complaining that, you know, the fire giant has up, rivals. hitboxes, yet in He does telegraph a lot with his feet. Dream, I see him get hit by some shit. I, I didn't even think that hit him. I was surprised. I was like, holy shit, that didn't even look anywhere close to him. That hit me, I'd say. Like, I got hit by the Brazier. Oh, oh <laughs> yet he shits on me for complaining about the wonky hitboxes. Whatever, man. Give me a break. Point! Yeah, fair enough. Like, I definitely, like, I hammered it home. Like, I definitely was going on and on. So, like, that's fair. What happened there was that I was actually getting lazy. What I would do for that attack is I would get underneath them and I would just roll for the distance. So the attack would just miss me. I would be underneath them. And what happened there is I was in front of them. And so I did my usual early roll that's poorly timed and I got roll caught. So that was my bad. So I went back to it and I learned how to actually time the roll. I had actually gotten lazy and I'd been learning to roll like too early because I was just like running underneath them and then dodging. So, you know, the hitbox looked okay to me though. And like, you know, I disagree on these hitboxes for Fire Giant that he's showing, but like, it, it is true that there are janky hitboxes in this game. Absolutely. Like the one that comes to mind, like I say in this video is the Ancestral Tree Spe or Ancestral Guardian Spirit. The roll attack is like the most fucking wacko hitbox ever. Like, there are bad hitboxes in this game, absolutely. Point the fucking camera at the fucking sky where the fucking projectiles are coming from! 
But as for another valid criticism of his, yes, for this part, I probably should have had the camera pointed up at him so I could see where these damn freaking volcano bits were falling. Yeah, let's keep it. It's a cool attack. I like it. Yeah. I'm kind of in the mood to watch his like vitriol because before I refused to watch like, see, and like, videos because I'm like, and like me adding these comments, like this is this is pretty unnecessary. Like I didn't have to say shit like this, you know. I think I was just tilted from fighting Fire Giant for like five straight hours, and I was hammered. So, but yeah, like totally, I was definitely a dickhead to him. I'm literally, I can feel the ulcers growing on my stomach lining watching this. Jesus. Okay, guy. I think you need a mental break from your mental break. That's What's fair. <laughs> I, I, that is fair. So like, yeah, I, I guess mental break isn't the right word. I guess it was more of a break for my eyes and my wrists typically. And also just to like mentally like stop. Cause like when I'm doing 30 minute long attempts, like it, you really like have to have that concentration and then your brain starts to go to sleep the more attempts you do. So it, re it wasn't really like a mental break, I guess it was just like a reset. I don't know. But yeah. I, I, I'm just nip like I, I'm trying not to do this because I'm just randomly nitpicking his like response video and like this is kind of the opposite of what we should do. Yeah, you know what? We should We're just trying to hear him out. You. you know? I'm a bit confused as to why he just stopped watching the video after the fire giant. Like yeah, I have to admit the fire giant bit and my problem with. I think I, he's right. I actually didn't watch the whole video. Part, but I really start to hit my stride in terms of valid criticisms after okay. talking about the fire giant. And I really would have liked to see his opinion on what I thought about Godskin Duo and all the different duo fights within Elden Ring and all duo the fights DLC suck. control V garbage that they put all Copy paste bosses game. suck. Like, those are some yeah. things that I would actually like for him to see and actually commentate on because <laughs> I don't no, he's know. Right. He'd probably still shit on me anyway. Okay, wait, let's watch well, another <laughs> quick review video. I gotta, like, probably, I actually would have, to be honest. Work me more, but yeah. We gotta do it. Yeah, no, that's pretty <laughs> obvious, yeah, I'd say. We gotta do it. That's true. I I didn't have to do it. Fan with how many videos of mine you watched in this twenty six minute time span, which has also been edited by your editor, so probably a couple hours. Shout out to my editor too. My editor is a guy who is looking to make an extra buck, so I tried him out, and he's uh, done well. Why? Thank you to him. The fact that he saw that and didn't like it and thought the boss is sh because of that says a lot. Okay, let's talk about the meteor part. Honestly, I think the fact that I died here is freaking hilarious. Yeah, I definitely should have hopped on Torrent the moment I saw that mother trucker blazing through the sky at me. And obviously, I know that now, but back then I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I was just dead. Light mode mods. I, I like light mode. I don't know. At it, but when it got me killed, admittedly, I was pissed. I never said the meteor portion was what made that boss shit, though. I just thought Fair it was enough. a funny clip to include within the video. Fair enough. And like you said, like he didn't really, he didn't specifically mention the meteor being bullshit. Oh my god, that's crazy. He's like, wow, this game just uses any opportunity to just kill It's so me. weird watching me, honestly. Barely. Again, he's putting words in my mouth because I never said that made the boss shit. I he didn't say that, no. The meteor was a really cool way to transition to phase two. Okay, cool. Oh my god. Oh. Whose fault was that? Not mine. Seriously though, here I was saying that the messages are in the way of the summon signs, not that they were blocking my roll button. Yeah, I mean if I had meant Oh. Because that makes I thought he was complaining that the arrow hit him because the messages were blocking his screen. Okay. My bad. No sense. But the messages being in the way of the summon signs is a genuinely stupid problem. And from should have yeah, that's fair enough. Oh god, I'm pausing. I'm a pause Andy. I'm so sorry, but like it's gonna happen, so I'll just live with it. But yeah, no, he's actually right. There was actually that one patch where people could block a grace with a fucking message, and it was so annoying. So yeah, okay. Disable the use of messages during this boss so that they don't get in your way when you're trying to summon. Honestly, you can turn um you can go into offline mode if you want, and it'll make the messages disappear. You won't have to deal with them. Here, but I think this is a great example of him shitting on me and not listening to what I'm trying to say. Or I'd say that's I'm fair. To get across simply because he's going into the video ready to shit on me, and Th that's true. That I was the intent. Expected any better from someone who doesn't drink Stella Artois? Come on, man, it's like the best beer. Oh, uh, actually, why did I think Heineken? No, Stella Artois is good. It's okay. I like it uh, on tap if I get the cup. Sometimes I'll go for Stella's on deal, but yeah. What? Why does he bring up Stella Artois though? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? 
What? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Stella Artois is okay. I, it's not my go-to, but I won't hate you if you like Stella. I have a buddy who just drinks that shit religiously. Um, but yeah, no, that is an example of me completely misunderstanding him. Do, 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 do. <laughs> that still gets me every time. <laughs> These messages. Who thought it was a good idea to allow? <laughs> That's so Why funny. Would you keep that in there. Uh, That's so cr like. Why would I keep that in there? Because you just fucking laughed, dude. It's funny. That's true. <laughs> That's fair. This guy just dead ass read. He read. IRL. <laughs> Uh, did he just say the words re and IRL in the same sentence? Oh, this is why yeah. I don't associate with Twitch streamers. <laughs> he doesn't associate with Twitch streamers. I mean, he has a point. People that say pog and shit in real life, like this is on Twitch, so it's acceptable. In real life, people that say pog champ out loud, like, you know, you get your chicken tendies like at a restaurant and they're like, here's your tendier, sir. And you're like, poggers. Like that is... It, that is gag inducing. So yeah, to be fair. To be fair. Huh? Enough. But then you have to go and say IRL. Ugh. God, how many minutes of this do I have left? That re from before. A lot. Was him being like level. Actually, 10. we're getting through it. We're getting through it. Damn it. Every single time you die to this guy, you gotta perform the same song and dance of running, summoning. You guys are arguing about light mode still. Over and over and over. <laughs> Every time I restart a boss, I have to start the boss again. Mm. Yes, the run back to Radon was repetitive and annoying. But if I hadn't died so much, I don't think it him, was. I wouldn't have had to do it over and over again, and probably wouldn't have complained about it as much. I definitely should have left Radon alone, got yeah, stop pausing with fingers, sense. and came back and tried again another day. That is one criticism I will absolutely admit to. <laughs> Level one. Perfect. Okay, so he understands that he would have had a much better time if he came back at it with a little bit uh, higher level. Fair enough. I still think that by comparison, the Radon runback is like, it's it's really, what, 15, 20 seconds? You can uh, summon from horseback too. You can just run around. You just go around the dune, show up. Like, it's really not that bad. Because like a big complaint that people have with Souls games especially if you look at ds2 fans they are sick of like how easy it is to just run past two enemies and then you're at the fog wall of the boss right they're like they miss real runbacks where you have to do the level like ds2 ds1 and uh, demon souls where you have to do the level and then get to do attempt the boss that worked when the bosses were a lot more rudimentary and basic and primitive by today's standards of from games so now I do appreciate the lack of runbacks where there's a fucking bonfire right at the door to the boss. Try as many times as you want until you're good at it or you can do it, right? So I, I like that they've done that, but some people still miss that, like a true runback. So by comparison, I don't, and especially when you're saying they're the worst boss they've ever made, then you start thinking, like comparing that to like DS1, like DS2, like Iron Passage, and like shit like that. Like, those runbacks are insane. Like, you have to do the runback 20 times, and like, on the 20th time, you make it, and you get one attempt. Like, the runback is harder than the bosses are, right? So, like, I, I think that it was a bit exaggerated, but that's up to taste, right? Like, you, if you prefer long runbacks, if you prefer, like, you know, that game like Celeste, where it's just like, boom, instantly, like, half a frame, you're back in it, retry, there is no downtime. So, you know, if you prefer no downtime, Fair enough. 100 die. Yeah, look at his level 100 stats. This guy is running the fucking Mr. Silly Dog build of fucking meta level invader with. I wonder how much HP he has, actually. 40 attunement with a fucking unupgraded broken scholar's candlestick. Hey, that's a badass build, man. Chill out. One thing I will stand by, though, is that I'm pretty sure. That was a pretty funny video, that build. Point in the game or at least 25, okay? And the fact that I still had that much health at 25 vigor was a little upsetting, which is why I say people with low vitality builds, because I was like, dude, I have like 25 vigor. Imagine if you had 12. I do still stand by that Radon does way too much damage relative to your health bar. Twitch bots your brain, that's true vigor. too. Sure that is definitely true. Shot, but I bet he'd still be doing chunks of my health, and that's just bosses in general within Elden Ring. They just tend to do a lot of damage. What is this? Predict his attacks, you say? Um, he said at least 25. Let's look at his health. I don't want to nitpick him over this, but I'm just genuinely curious. He 
he might be right. We should just see. Hold on. We're going to take a little break here. Let me make a backup. How much do you guys think it's worth it? I mean, I don't know. He says he has at least 25. I'd say that's probably about right. I don't really see the need to nitpick him because my rune level one guy just with talismans is like here and with the paladin starter. No, sorry, with the wretch starter. I don't know because like, does he do that much damage? Because if you look at my Radon video, I have the ritual shield talisman. So I have I'm literally rune level one. And I have the Ritual Shield Talisman, which gives you 30% damage reduction on the first hit. With that one Talisman, I can tank most of his attacks and like live. So, but I mean, he does do a lot of damage. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, like, I mean, 25 to 30 is really good for the level he's at. Clearly, I thought he was like rune level 30, not like 30 vigor. I would say that's definitely not 30 vigor. 25 might be close to the mark, though. But like still by like this game standards it's low vigor like you should really be aiming for 50 to 60 by the end game obviously you could say that radon's an early game boss so it doesn't you know matter but uh i don't know like you can if you get like if you find damage reduction and stuff like that like you can easily survive his attacks i don't know he does do a lot of damage especially his uh, phase two the spectacle attacks that do like they do mega damage but on the other hand they're easier to dodge his sword move set is really hard to learn. Like he has his sword move set's insane. That's why I would say his first phase is actually the hardest. Because you have to just deal with the sword combos all the time. But yeah. I miss pre-nerf Radon. Okay, can we like he'll bring it up for sure, but like what happened? Like he got nerfed, but then they reverted the patch, right? So I find there's a lot. This is my big problem with these games, is that every time there is just so much misinformation that gets spread about these games that no one is ever on the same page about them. And that's what really upsets me a lot of the time. To my knowledge, the patch was reverted, but they kept some of the hitbox fixes where they made the hitboxes smaller, which was great. Felt more consistent. And I think that's what his one of his big complaints was about, where it's just like the big swords, like when he was talking about the swords just being bullshit, like they're big fucking honking hitboxes. I can see that, you know. Let's see, 10 vigor, 414, 20 is 652, 25 is 800. Uh, does he get hit in his video? I, like we could figure it out, but like, and it, the goal is not to nitpick him here. The goal is just to like, I mean, we're kind of our nitpicking him, which is unfortunate, I'm sorry, but I just want to hear him out, you know? Cause like, I think like at the end of the day, remember I was talking about why I'm so animated when, I, when I'm streaming? The other thing is, like, in fact, I'm not energetic in my day-to-day -day life. And in fact, I feel like I burn a lot of my social energy when I stream. I just feel like zonk. But the other thing is, I don't get mad. I'm a go-with-the-flow kind of guy. Like, I don't give a shit. It takes a lot to upset me. But like I said, I like expressing that other aspect of my personality, that rowdiness, right? So when it comes to art and media, I love getting impassioned. I love, like, the art of conversation. Arguing is kind of a, a, a like an art of conversation, albeit it's really annoying when you have like boomers that only complain about shit as a form of conversation. But I think arguing is fun. And like when it comes to art and media, like I actually get impassioned over that and I get exaggerated and I, I do shit like this, right? Because at the end of the day, we're talking about a video game or a movie or an album or a fucking, or like an actual painting, right? It's meaningless. Like, it's not, there's no stakes. Like, we're arguing about something that is just 100% wholly subjective, which is why I don't mind getting into these heated arguments about games like this and like going off the rails. Because I think at the end of the day, it's like we're just talking about games here. Like, we're disagreeing about a video game. And the other thing I'll say too is I think that me and Quick come from like opposite ends of this. I think Quick, because like I saw a lot of his videos in Elder Ring and they were all mostly negative. Um, I think he's coming at it from like a game critic, like, you know, perspective where you're just hearing nothing but like un like bridled positivity. Like this is the best, this is game of the year. This is the best game I've ever made. And he's sitting there being like, there's a lot of problems with this game. What are you guys talking about? Whereas I'm so ingrained in the PVP community ever since the network test, I have heard nothing but absolute negativity about Elden Ring. And I was the DS3 whiner. I was the guy who played DS3 for years and I was always so choked about like random shit, you know? Hey, what's up, Rafin? 
Oh my god, is it D&D &D time? No, we got time. Thanks so much for the sub. Play time. Thank you. Thank you so much for the sub, man. Where was I? Okay, so yeah, so like I complained about DS3 all the time and all its broken shit and how like, you know, how the direction of the community went and like tech and shit like that. And when Elden came out, I was like, I don't want to be that guy anymore that just always complains. Like my friends enjoy the game despite all that shit. So like, okay, let's not be like that for Elden Ring. But the thing is, Elden Ring was so bad at launch for PvP. There's still so many problems, even though it's gotten infinitely better with patches now. But yeah, nothing but non-stop negativity, and the damage has been done. A lot, like dozens and dozens of my friends that we used to play DS3 every day are done. Like, they'll, they'll never play Elden Ring, no matter how good it gets. Like, they're just done with invasions and PvP and dueling. Because, like, of how fucked up the balance was. So I've heard nothing but constant negativity and depression about this game. So I was like, okay, how about I spread some positivity, but then I, you know... I saw people making like negative reviews about it that were based like, you know, not factually correct and stuff like that. And I nitpicked them. And so I was pissed off, right? But yeah, so I think we're coming at it from opposite ends. He was like, okay, there's just so much that like, people are missing like the, the, the big problems about this game. I feel like there's some problems that he could have highlighted more. Uh, but whatever. And then I'm coming at it from just like everyone's just shitting on this game constantly. When they actually achieve so much, I feel like. They made a game that's their hardest game ever, while simultaneously it's their most accessible accessible game ever. And, uh, yeah. And, like, just, like, a, it's the sandbox Souls game. There's so much shit you can do. It's crazy. So I think it was a huge crowning achievement, honestly. It has a shit ton of problems. Dozens, if not hundreds of problems that I still have with the game, mostly around the PvP. But, uh, they're there, you know? Anyway, continue. Figure. Imagine if you had 12. I do still stand by that Radon does way too much damage relative to your health bar, as even with double the vigor I'm sure I wouldn't have been getting one shot, but I bet he'd still be doing chunks of my health, and that's just bosses in general within Elden Ring, they just tend to do a lot of damage. I mean that's like three hits, I think that's okay. Elden Ring definitely has more damage, like Elden Ring bosses do more damage. And the other thing too is that health is still important, you still need a shit ton of health, more than you ever needed, but honestly absorptions are even more important in this game. So bosses like Radagon and Elden Beast get hard cucked by fucking Halig Tree Talisman or Fire Giant just getting hard cucked. You could just get the Flame Drake Talisman plus two and just literally never dodge one of Fire Giant's fire attacks. You could just soak that and go ape shit on him because like 20% fire reduction or 20% faith reduction, holy damage reduction is insane. Absorptions are very important in this game, more important than before, even though you still need more health than before too. You're like, yeah, he's right. He's on to that. Like, the damage is way higher in this game. Predict his attacks, you say? This guy doesn't even have animations. No one's- who the fuck is saying predict attacks? What fucking game can you predict 100% of the time what the boss is going to attack you? Oh, I'm so like, over. This game, you have more opportunity to do that than even in other games. Yes, because you know what pool he's going to pick from, from his flowchart, based on your positioning. I think this is the most ridiculous point of them all, though, when it comes to Radon anyway. Sure, maybe I went a little far saying Radon has no animations. He obviously does. They just have a very low startup. But to say that you can predict Radon's attacks based on- He has on one or two that have low startups. Animations ...because of distance? Yeah, fuck that. I'd rather just stay on Torrent the entire time and summon, summon, summon. I think part of the reason I found Radon so difficult was because of how unpredictable his attacks were, and that's probably part of the appeal to a lot of people. But if it's like you say, and his animations are so predictable because they come from a flowchart, yeah. I tell you that that's some flawed ass boss design. Bro! I don't think so. I think it's a huge step up in boss design. Like, you know, like having actual combo flow, like, and it's really not that hard. It's like three attacks deep. Like he'll start a move and if you're in front of him, he'll continue the combo one way. If you're behind him, he'll do a different attack that sweeps you up from behind him. Like it's as simple as that, you know? It's just positional based. Like they did this. This is not a new thing. This has been around since Bloodborne. All the Bloodborne bosses operate like this. Aunt of Sullivan, Gale, they operate like this, okay? And it just goes to show that a lot of people don't truly understand. Like most people will never truly 100% learn a boss in this game. And that's fine. Like you can face roll the boss. Like it's okay. But like this is how the boss functions. So, I mean, and he's okay with saying like, so I'll just summon. That's fine. If you don't want to learn it, it's fine. Radon's sword combos are really hard to learn. They're really complex, and two of the attacks are very quick. You have to have, like, actually good reaction speed to dodge it. So, yeah, that's fair. 
but yeah you can you can like um like a like you can understand what flow chart he's entering when he starts a combo right so you're like okay he's either gonna do this or this like when he starts a, a combo it's not like if you have dancer where she does a spin attack right okay she's gonna she starts the spin attack you know she's gonna spin five times and that's the end of the attack with a boss in Elden Ring, they'll start the spin attack and then you got to be like, okay, now they will either continue spinning or they will do this other move. And if I'm behind them, 99% of the time, they're going to do this other move that sweeps you out from behind them. Like Radon has his backhand attacks, right? So that's what I mean. But yeah, fair. If you don't like that, you don't like that. That's fine. I think that it's a lot more depth and complexity to the boss design than Souls games ever were, where it's just like you roll, you swing, that's it. There's no surprises, you know? So, yeah. Different strokes for different folks. And, um, yeah, that's the other thing, too. Like, if you're gonna... It's one thing if you don't want to learn Radon and you just want to summon, that's fine. But if you're gonna make a video saying he's the worst boss ever made, like, at that point, you should try to understand the boss. Like, when I made that Anderson video, I was, like, I was the one doing all the fucking testing and people called me lazy. Anderson would say Malakith's just bullshit and undodgeable. So then I was like, okay, is he actually? I don't know. And I sat down for like four hours and I just played the shit out of him and I learned how to hitless him with the Colossal Greatsword. Like, it's not that hard. If you go in with the, like, you have to like learn it, right? Learn, well, I did the Radon rune level one plus zero. It took a long time to learn it, but like you, like you sit down and you learn it, right? If you can complain about it, that's fine. Like call it the worst boss ever, but like, if you sit down and learn the sword combos, they're not that bad. So like, but if you don't want to, that's fine. It really just boils down to it being too hard for some people. And it's not like a big ego thing about like skill level. Like if you feel like you have to fucking spend six hours to like actually learn a boss to beat it, and that's too much to be worth the time investment, that's fine. But that's your preference, right? I like that. And the game is made for like that. Like it's made for me that way. But also, there are the easy mechanics, so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And that's where I think the beauty of Elden Ring is. That it can be that hard for people like me. But also, if you don't want to engage with that, you can just not do that. And that's fine. But don't blame the game and say that he's a shit boss because, like, you don't want to learn that. That's, like, you know? That's just how it is. Anyway, I'm fucking nitpicking him again. We're just gonna keep going. But did you guys know that he has magic? Ooh, holy sh! Holy shit! He actually did turn into the Hulk. <laughs> oh shit! My green screen's going ape shit. Honestly, all this I'm melting. Criticism here. I don't have anything to rebuttal with. But actually, I, I yeah. Love this game. <laughs> I I think that is a trap that a lot of critics fall into, and just like video essays in general, is it just you just start listing the boss moves without like you know like like why are his meteorites bullshit? You know. But anyway. <laughs> melted my camera. <laughs> these people on? You can have a problem with a boss and still enjoy the game as a whole. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever played a boss within a video this is true. you really liked and been like, God, man, I freaking hate that boss. He's cheap as shit. But He's I absolutely correct. This game. Yeah, 100%. Final Fantasy X. Ugh, Seymour. I've never played Final Rad Fantasy. Bastard. <laughs> I that boss fight every Rad bastard. Fight. But I'll be damned if that game is not in my top five favorites of all time. All right. Isn't Final Fantasy X the one where he goes, ah, ha, ha, ha. I think that's the one. He is correct. That, uh, what he showed there was a little bit of projection on my part of like, it, it wasn't really about him, to be fair. Like, it was really just like a problem I have with a lot of people that are just like, like, it's just so bizarre when you see people like complaining about the game so heavily and then they just turn around at the end and are like, I love it. You know, to be fair, you can't hate a boss and still enjoy the game. Problem and like, this will be the main criticism I guess I have for like game or uh, game, why was I gonna call them game reviews, quick reviews. So like, if I made, I don't know, if I made of let's say I made ten videos, I don't know how many videos he made about Elden Ring. I'm sure some of them are positive, but he has quite a lot of negative uh, videos about Elden Ring, which are the ones I saw and the ones I was interested in. <clears throat> if I made ten videos about Pulp Fiction, and I said like. And they were like, um, Pulp Fiction is bad because it has the un like non-chronological editing and it's too hard for me to follow. And if that's, I mean, pff, you're telling me I got to like pay attention to that. Well, I'd rather not do that. That's fine. Like 
And then I make another video that's like why uh, Pulp Fiction has the most unrealistic and unnatural dialogue. And then I made a video that said why <laughs> why Quentin Tarantino, I mean this is a bad example, but like why Pulp Fiction shows that Tarantino is racist, which is, it's not a good example, but that's something that people would actually criticize Pulp Fiction about. And then let's say I made a video that's like why uh, Pulp Fiction is Samuel L. Jackson's worst performance of all time like and then on and on i made 10 videos like that right where i focus in on one topic that i like that's negative about uh pulp fiction that i don't like and it's apparent to people that i'm more of like a casual like i just like movies kind of thing i'm not a big tarantino stan i haven't even seen all of his movies i mean maybe this guy's played all the souls games i don't know but uh something like that you know you could understand why people who are enjoyers of pulp fiction would be like why the fuck does this guy have such a weird rage boner for Pulp Fiction? Like, and like, you can understand why they would shit on me. Like, they would fucking ridicule me. Like, that is 100% something that would happen if I did that, right? So like, you know, if you're focusing so much on the negative aspects, at some point, I'm just gonna be like, why does this guy hate this game so weirdly? And, uh, and that's why I just thought it was, it was funny and bizarre when you just turn around at the end and say, Actually, I love this game. And I'm just like, but like, you haven't said any good things about it. I mean, he probably does have positive videos on Eldering I didn't watch. But uh, that's the impression I got. But generally, I think it's more productive to make positive themed videos. And like, you don't have to worry about getting shit like this typically. I mean, you will still get the random like fucking lunatics. Like on my Sekiro video, that pinned comment where the guy's like, How could you defend Elden Scheisse? It's the worst game ever. <laughs> like, and you're like, what the fuck? It, like just weirdos like that. But generally, you don't have to deal with heat like this when you're making positive, like just positive content in general, right? Not saying you can't say bad shit about games or anything really. But that's just what's going to come with it, right? So anyway, that's the impression I got from watching his content. Albeit, I only watched his negative Elden Ring videos, right? So, yeah. They talk shit in every video. That's true. I mean, if you're a content creator, you will see negativity on everything you post. So that is the thing, right? And then also the other thing too was that, um, I, I mean, I get it, right? Like that video, he's already talked about it. I acknowledged it. His uh, Radon response video when the 1.03 patch where they nerfed Radon for a bit. Like, I get it. He did. We meant it as a joke and as a meme post, right? And I, I, I appreciate that. More people should shit post. I love shit posts, right? Like when Mook did that why Elden Ring will fail video and it blew up. And then he fucking took it down and put shit posts in the title because he was so sick of people like getting mad at him for it. But it was actually such a funny video. Um, like I get more people should shit post. Yeah, that's fair. But like in the context of like all these like, you know, one after another negative videos about Elden Ring, it doesn't like it makes it more seem like a lot of people could read into it as being petty, right? Like, it just seems like you're like, you're just, you're doubling down and you're like, you're clowning on like the haters kind of thing, right? Literally clowning on them actually. But uh, so, but I appreciate that he went for like a, just a joke video, like more, I, I like shit though, so yeah. But like, that's the impression one could get, right? If I'm just coming in, who's this? Like, this is like literally what I did. I just came in, I'm like, who is this guy? Why does he have such a rage boner for uh, Elden Ring? And I was just like, what the hell? Like, this is ridiculous. Because I disagreed with a lot of what he said. So, yeah. That was just my initial, I guess, impression. But, like I said, at the end of the day, we disagree about a video game. It's meaningless. I'm sure Quick is a great dude, you know? Discord friends so that we could stop having, like, the most brain-dead arguments about that video. Or about the water already. Holy shit. I'm talking too much. It was kind of more about, like, the greater hive mind at large. The scrub hive mind. And now they're always just circling jerking each other with rumors and bad information. And, you know, actively gatekeeping people from it. Oh, I'm gonna die. So he just called Joseph Anderson a scrub? And yet he is, Joseph yeah. Anderson's the gatekeeper here. Yeah, okay, dude. Actually, yeah, he is, yeah. Like, so basically, like, when you spread a bunch of intentionally or not misinformation about the game that happens with every one of these releases, you actively gatekeep people from trying the games. There was one guy who had the most base comment ever on my video, and he said, I am so pissed off at the Souls community. Because for years, all, like, and I was a victim of this. I watched Anderson videos before I had ever played a Souls game myself, and I played it, and I'm like, oh, he's just full of shit. Like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So, like, <laughs> and I had not 
I steered clear of like Bloodborne and all these, or I think Bloodborne was the one I played, but like Souls games I steered clear of for years. So I was like, oh, that doesn't sound like it's for me at all. And then you play it and you're like, they're actually really reasonable if you just have like a brain. What's up, Beefy? So uh, it, like, I don't, like you are gatekeeping people if you're like making up the shit that it's too hard and like you're giving all this like false information. You are gatekeeping people. People were accusing me of being an elitist when I am trying to just give people the facts and like make it so that more people can enjoy the game so they understand how the game works. And like that makes me an elitist gatekeeper when I'm trying to help people to actually understand how the game works, right? And clear up lies about the game. So, you know, I don't think that I'm a god gamer or that I'm like, I use the tag god gamer because that's a meme. But like, I don't think I'm like a superior gamer to people. The point of me doing these challenge runs is to show people that I play this game like once or twice a month and I can do this. I can literally learn to hitless a boss because I have two eyeballs and a heartbeat. It's not that hard. Like it's anyone can do this. Like it's not special, you know? But like people, like they give into this shit. They like poise is disabled in DS3. People still believe that to this day. Like it's crazy. People just like get on these like, oh God, it's crazy. So yeah, I was actually really upset and mind boggled by Joseph Anderson's video. I was just sick of, like, he's gotten so much stuff wrong before, but this time I was like, this is so bad. Like, it was, I really thought Anderson's video was very, very bad. It's not special to beat Dark Souls. No, that's the thing. And a lot of people think it's like a big gamer badge of honor when they're like, they co-op and they like mage go through like Dark Souls 3 and they hate it. They hate the game the whole time, but they're like, look guys, I beat the hardest game ever made, but like, it was miserable. Like, you don't have to, like, it's not that hard. Like, you know, if you have a brain, if you like pick up a shield, you read the descriptions, you understand how the stats work, it's not that hard. That is like, it's crazy to me that people forget why Dark Souls 1 was such a breath of fresh air. It was such a breath of fresh air and an instant classic and game of the decade because it respected the intelligence of the player. It didn't tutorialize every aspect of the game. It just, it's an un, uh, not unforgiving, it's uh, unapologetic puts you in the world and it's not that bad if you just have a brain like you can figure it out it's not that bad but people make it out to be like this insane like gamer fucking pilgrimage right like that is the fucking reason these games are so nice is that it respects your intelligence and your resilience as a human being the fact that you can problem solve and figure it out you know, and not have your hand held for the fucking whole game. Like every other developer would like make you fucking see all the optional content and stuff like that and tutorialize you on how like the poise system works and everything. Like you don't need to do that. That's what makes their fucking game design so refreshing. So yeah, I do think that spreading misinformation about the game intentionally or not is indirectly gatekeeping people from enjoying the franchise because it happens to people all the time. Like I said, that guy was like, I never tried a Souls game because people like say all the shit about them. And I was like, that doesn't sound like anything I'd enjoy at all. That sounds like too hard. Why would I enjoy dying, you know, hundreds of times? It sounds miserable. And then he played Elden Ring because it's the most successful ga accessible game that they've made. And he's like, holy shit, this clicked with me. And then he went back and he played every single Souls game within the period of two months. He played all Demon Souls, the trilogy and Bloodborne and Sekiro. And he's like, these are my favorite games now. I am so pissed off that people at the community for fucking saying all this random shit that's not even true. And I never touch the games because of that. That is a thing that happens. Anyway, we're getting on a tangent. Uh, I'm just gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna run to the bathroom, get some more water. Oh, and the other thing about the Anderson video, like what I was mentioning here, like why I made it in the first place and why unfortunately a lot of, why a lot of like, YouTube discourse is bullshit is because you have people doing these meme tier long form game critiques that are just like the only people that can reasonably respond to something like that fucking big is a small creator doing fucking a five month long passion project like what I did all my free time for four and a half months you know and I did fucking tons of renditions of that video I did so much testing and I got I fucking connected with so many challenge runners and like fucking all sorts of shit so I could get it right because I wanted to know like is some of this shit undodgeable 
And some of it, I even went out and I discovered new dodges. Like I discovered the corpse pile dodge for Rikard, for the Lava Quake. And then I found out afterwards that you can just dodge it by running and jumping to the side, like you can with Melania's first flurry. So like, it helps, yeah, like, I don't know. It's just so ridiculous. So the problem was that I would, I watched Anderson's video five times and like, why does he not timestamp? Cause it would be easy to just clip him and show people like what he actually says about shit. Cause people's memory bias is so strong. So I watched his video five times, maybe six times. And I made my own list of timestamps of like, I, t I went through and I timestamped every minute and a half or so. And basically just like had a little summary of what he was saying at each point in time. So that'd be more digestible and I could go back through it. And so afterwards, I would talk with people on Discord about it. People, like, because a lot of my friends were really negative about Elden Ring. And they're like, yeah, no, I totally agree with this video. I'm like, okay, well, like, what did he say about, like, this specifically in side dungeons? What did he say about great ruins? Or what did he, like, even stuff towards the end of the video. And they would just either say some shit that was wrong, and I would show them, like, no, he actually said this. And they're like, no, 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 like, maybe he says it again at a different point in the video. I'm like, nope, I look through, I'm like, no, he doesn't bring this topic up again, like, uh, dungeon rewards, for example, right? At the 35 minute mark to the 42 minute mark of his video. And, uh, or they would just straight up admit, I just finished watching it and I, I don't remember anything specific about it. Because he has this way of doing this like, per like in that video specifically, he doesn't do it in every single video, but his Soulsborne videos tend to go like this, where he's in this perma sidetrack, constantly sidetrack, and he has this way of just instantly contradicting everything that he says. I like this, but actually it's bullshit and they should delete it. But it could have been good with this one simple fix, but it's actually bullshit. And like, or like, I love how big the open world is, but actually it's too bloated and they should have cut all of Kayla and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, does he like it? Does he not? He's kind of both sides and you're just kind of instant. They're like, intentionally or not, you are farming like memory bias, right? Cause you're just, you're like, I, you say something bad and good about everything, right? And it's not like in a way that's trying to be like objective or as some people say, intellectually honest. <laughs> like, it's it's just ridiculous. So the problem I had was every time I tried to talk about his video, nobody could even agree on what he said about basic things. Like, what is his opinion on, uh, on power stancing? No one could even agree on that. It was so annoying. Like you could not even, cause I'm like, no, he said this. I'm like, no, he said, he said this, this is what he meant. And it was so ridiculous. So that's why I made that video. It's like, okay. And like, that's why I unfortunately have to show clips. And at the start of the video, I said, Hey, I'm going to be showing a lot of clips. Go watch his video. That way I won't take him out of context and make, you know, get your own interpretation. I'm not hundred percent right here either. Like you got to make your own opinion. Don't watch a fucking mean tier video essayist and then use that as a substitute and as a shield for your having your own opinion. That's what a lot of people do. They're like, Oh, watch this Anders, this an hour and a half hour, two hour video. Eldering bad. Watch this video. <laughs> Like have your own opinion and like, you know, think critically about what people are saying. Like you don't necessarily have to agree with me or Anderson, but uh, yeah, I don't know. So that, that, that video is just still a sore spot for me. I fucking hate that video. And the other, the, uh, the other unfortunate thing is too, is you have these like lower end critics that like just completely fucking yoink talking points from people like Anderson, like bigger content creators. And they literally just plagiarize it and just reach like, and they just yoink talking points without even understanding that. And it's just, it makes it even worse. Like, ugh. but anyway, I mean, that's not the majority of content creators, but some people are like that. Let's, I guess, continue before I get on a giant sand side tangent about Anderson's video. Blech. Blech. Speaking about that, it's, we're due for another quick reviews video. All right. This is what you guys have reduced me to. You guys are literally- I called it. Into Nikado Avocado. You guys understand? You. I don't want to do it, but you guys are just making me be a drama frog. It's okay, man. We all know you love to watch my videos. You spent more than half your stream doing it instead of actually playing the game. I don't want to do That's it, not true, but, but you guys are just making me be a He's drama just being hyperbolic. Frog. The problem with PvP. Oh, it's right there. Let's see if his comments are just flaming him again. Like there's nothing wrong with being a, like a formulaic YouTuber. And like, I, I think what actually what he's going for when he has like the problem with this video and maybe I'm getting into this too early because I think he'll like we'll get to it at this point in the video. But when you just have like the problem with this, the problem with that, the problem with this, you understand like I see that and I'm like, oh, this is just total negativity nitpicking shit. But uh, probably what his line of thinking is, is like that's his um, 
Like that's his video series, the problem with, like that's a video series that he does, right? So that's probably more so what it is. But uh, yeah. Oh, I actually left a reasonable level-headed comment on this video. I was talking about the, um, that was the, when the patch, when there was like no activity for no reason. And there's no explanation for that either. That's so, so dumb. Like the fact that you just couldn't get invasions was ridiculous. No, you left a reasonable comment on that video because this video had some valid points. If there were absolutely no issues with Elden Ring's PvP, then the game would be filled with players experimenting with it. But no, this game is absolutely... Is, is this a song that's exposed song? <laughs> ...in the water because there's no longevity here when it comes to PvP content because they got rid of covenants and ruined invasions. I disagree. Every one of them making whack I disagree with that 100%. There is definitely longevity and it's only getting better too. But yeah, no, he's right. It's not, I'm not saying that there is no problems with PvP. There is hundreds of issues with PvP. There is tons of issues with PvP. My problem with this video is that it didn't illuminate the most glaring issues with the game's balance. It was more like weird, like preferential shit, I guess. Like, like, uh, like the summon limits and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I just thought it was really weird to, like, not mention status effects, ghost hitting, how broken shields were, the damage, maybe he does bring up the damage balance, how bad, uh, he, does he bring up the connections? He does bring up the connections, but, like, the number one fatal flaw of this game is input dropping, and the funniest thing is, when I see, like, devout critics of Elden Ring, the fact that they don't even address input dropping is crazy to me because that is the most glaring issue in the entire game. It is ridiculous. It is almost unplayable. For a guy like me who challenge runs, where I do 30 minutes of fucking fire giant and then my roll input just doesn't go off and I fucking die, that's ridiculous. And like, same thing in an invasion. Your roll input doesn't go off, you get 100 to zero and you die. Like, there's no team damage. Like, uh, status effects ghost hitting where he said, like, you know, like the damage is crazy. There's no reason to use great swords or anything sh like heavier than a katana or a uh, spear. Uh, what else? You know, like Bloodhound step was insanely broken. He probably mentions that. Like, there's just so many issues. There was like chain casting. Uh, there's still like chainsaw glitching and shit like that. They haven't fully corrected stance swaps. They've only kind of like. I think probably input dropping is a byproduct of them trying to have like a hot fix for all the stance swap glitches that were in DS3 and present all their games. Like them grandfathering in the shitty connection system. And same thing, like a lot of the code where you have a lot of these glitches that have been around since even DS1 times, it's ridiculous. So like, I feel like there is just like way, way, way more important issues to talk about rather than the ones he addressed. But that's not to say that they're not worth addressing at all. So let's stop nitpicking them. So bad for this. Let's just hear them out. I agree though. He is right. Covenant. I don't think covenants would extend the longevity of the game, but the covenant system should have been around, I think. And it could have been way better. Same thing with the great runes. I think there might be a rebalance and more great runes coming in the DLC. So I think we have yet to see, but that is a valid point. Covenants should definitely be a part of this game and they shouldn't just be like shitty, meaningless. Like I think he exaggerates how good they were in DS3 because like the rewards were pretty dookie and there wasn't really a reason to pick a covenant in DS3 uh, outside of like getting Dark Moonblade buff or whatever. But like, I, I feel like they could have extrap, they could have expanded on the covenant system way more. It could have been way better, I think. So he is correct in that. Builds and joining fight clubs. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think I could count your hours. I think I might be able to count the amount of hours you have in these games. God, I fucking hate this mentality, dude. <laughs> As if having a thousand hours versus 200 hours in a game should have any bearing on your ability to criticize it properly. Of course, the more hours... It was more of a joke, but yeah. ...the better you understand it, and therefore you're able to make better arguments. But if 200 hours isn't enough to have an... This, guy could, this guy's good music choice. ...then you need to drop the controller and get outside more. Texas. Oh, that's nope. um, that's that fucking um, George Romero movie. Um, yeah, it was more of a joke. <laughs> the joke was that yeah, I do have thousands of hours in the PvP because I enjoy it a lot. But then again, like people, like I get that a lot where people are like, yeah, well, I don't want to have to spend two thirds of every day of my life playing Elden Ring just to get good enough to beat a boss like you. 
like man i play this game once like i haven't played this game in over a month i play it once a week or two weeks like a normal human being i play a little bit of video games like once or twice a day on a weekend at the end of the week but it was more of a joke on the fact that he's running uh because like this is the thing when you pvp enough in the games you see a lot of stereotypes right so you have a dude in fallen knight armor with the fucking i don't know what shield that is but usually you see dark sword shield of want you know it's a noob i don't know why but 90 percent of all noobs just have that loadout it's just like first time players like they'll just do that and then same thing this is like a stereotype of like uh jimmy's first or like timmy's first invader build where you have a chase the bro fashion and you're just doing staggered r1s with the twinkiest axe in the game and then you're just you're fishing for one shot parries like it is the most like beginner intro level style of play so that's what i was kind of making a remark on not saying you cannot talk about pvp but like I, you know it's just funny when you said countless hours and it's just like the most introductory level like type of loadout that was kind of funny so like that's just what i made the remark on but if 200 hours not saying he can't critique the pvp formed opinion on a game then you need to drop the controller and get outside the other thing too is like uh, you can have an opinion on it, but I don't think it will be as an informed opinion, right? Like, that's just a fact. I have lots more. I have uh, over 2,000 hours of PvP in DS3, and even I know nothing. Like, I fucking, I look at spreadsheets and shit, too. I understand nothing. I don't know, like, I don't have all the fucking, uh, like, if you look at the dueling scene, I don't have all the, the fucking uh, shit memorized of, like, uh, who has priority out of hit stun. You know, like every poise breakpoint memorized. I don't know any of that shit. Like, and I know a lot about the game. So, like, my point is that these games have an unbelievable, like, Marianas Trench level depth to them if you get into the nitty gritty. So, like, you really, like, even someone like me, I would, I have to defer to so many people because I am not 100% certain on, like, a lot of, like, mechanics that make the PvP tick in this game. There is, so much obscurity that it is unfucking believable i'm at the stage of like the iceberg where like i know enough to know that i know nothing after 2000 hours it is insane the amount of shit you can like learn in this game so that's what kind of i'm getting at basically not to say that you can't have an opinion on the pvp at all because you participated in it clearly but it is not going to be an informed one like I'll just straight up like it won't be there are people that like have made livings not livings but like people that do tournaments consistently for hundreds of dollars prize pools still to this day and they know so much about the game's pvp that it's insane so i defer to those people when i like not because like oh the game should be balanced around the most ultimate tryhard mentality but like you should at least understand how the game actually works right so anyway i more i knew nothing john so <laughs> This is actually good. I didn't even realize the fucking text. Live footage of the fuck. <laughs> okay, this guy's got jokes. This is good. This is great. <laughs> no offense. This is good. I think I probably know your hours too. The problem I do have a lot of hours. Is that you're outnumbered. That's the point. I actually have a show. Let's settle this quick. Let's do a 1v1. <laughs> Oh god, can you imagine if I lose though? I haven't even played DS3 or Elden Ring in so long. And I've actually never dueled in Elden Ring yet, but I gotta get around to it. Uh, what is my hours actually? I have 2,100 hours on this account. So at least 2,000. Mentality, dude. As if having a thousand you understand isn't enough to and that isn't even and like it it also that is not correlative to how good you are or how knowledge you are about the game either just look at fucking drunken tam that motherfucker has almost nine thousand hours in ds3 all right and he's still a fucking ganker shitter oh the sweaties lads get the sweaties <laughs> so like to be fair the game like the amount of hours you have in game does not correlate to your skill level either to have an informed opinion on a game then you need to drop the control oh, the hard part. outside more. Oh. But you should throw shade. I like this. But I think I probably know your hours too. The problem with it, you should be throwing shade. I appreciate it. Numbered. That's the point of invasions. Like, is he actually going to say that the problem with invasions is that you're fighting a 2v1? That's kind of the point. 
Okay, so since when has the point of invasions been about being outnumbered? Literally- You're always outnumbered. So invasions have always been a mystery. Like, oh god, is the host gonna have buddy? Well, yeah. Hopefully I can catch him by himself before he summons any help. This was always the case in previous games. But the thing is, if you're not outnumbered, you're just dueling. Like, you know, or you're dueling while you're, or you're ganking with, uh, with the PvE against one poor host. Like, it's not an invasion at that point, right? I mean, I guess, I, I guess that's more of my definition, to be fair. Because, like, an invasion, you're invading another player's world, whatever happens, happens, right? But to me, like, and typically, and especially now in Elden Ring, you are always going to be outnumbered. You're not going to invade a solo host unless they are dry-fingered, which is what I do sometimes for fun. But, like, you are not going to get a solo invader. Well, a solo host. So, uh, yeah. Which, like, I, I think I cut it out of the video, but I talked about it. I'm like, yeah, it is fun inviting, like, a solo host sometimes. You just kind of piss around. But, um, I think, like, the point of invading is you're fighting, like, three, like impossible odds, right? Like, the odds in invasions are so stacked against you, it's insane. You can have, like, over-leveled guys that are, like, doing, like, hundreds of levels on you, and they're fucking shooting tons of magic, and they don't have team damage. And it's like, they can just fucking destroy you. Like, it's actually insane to me that gankers ever lose, to be honest. Like, it, you are so fucking outmatched. And that's like, rising above those odds is what invasions are about to me. But yeah. Whereas an Elden Ring- Let's just hear him out. Fuck it. I gotta stop interrupting. Let's just hear him out. Never. Whereas an Elden Ring, you will always, every single time, be fighting against multiple players during invasions, guaranteed. Yeah. It takes away all of the fun from invasions, period. There's no point. Vehemently disagree. To, get ganked. to me, that is the point of invasions. The with getting ganked is fighting gangs. Invasions. That's just the name of the game. But when it happens every single time, I'm gonna. Oh wow. Go do duels, which are just. Oh, no, that was brutal. Period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess he just like fundamentally disagrees on like what he. I guess, and that's the other beauty I like about these games too, and like what I realize talking about them all the time. Is that we play these games? Yeah, where was Chat Sims hard? A lot of we enjoy these games, but oftentimes for totally opposite reasons. And I realized that playing DS2 and then watching having Side Effect watch me play DS2 and then watching Side Effect play Dark Souls 3 and having it and get frustrated at like Crystal Mage. And because he, he was getting, he was pissed off that he was getting uh, staggered through his hyper armor by a boss with a rapier. And he was like, he just likes to poise mode through shit, right? And I was like, wow, we like games for totally different reasons, eh? And so I guess we just like invasions for different reasons. I mean, like, all the, the community members that I know, the invasion community, we like invading because we like overcoming impossible odds and spanking ganks. That's the fun, that's the real challenge. When you get good at a game and you want that challenge, just like, you, like ah, I crave that, like, really hard difficulty, then a lot of people turn to invading, and, like, that's where they get their difficulty again. You're fighting, like, fully decked out guys that, like, can't hit each other, and it's really, really hard. And yeah, in Elden Ring, it sucks. Because like, especially in these patches, ganks were fucking brutal. Like you just fucking die. If you get hit by anything, you get true combo to death by whatever else hits you next. So it was awful, yeah. That is kind of the name of the game with invasions to me. I guess to him, he, like the problem is like, my problem with invasions is that I want like a natural invasion. Like three, four guys laying through the level and I'm like guerrilla warfare in the level fighting them, run heal, and it's just like, it's guerrilla warfare. Like, that's fun. Like the old classic Saint Riot style invasion, right? The problem I had with DS3 is that from 2019, 2020 and on, no one ever went into the level. You would have three or four guys sucking each other's dicks, just sitting at the bonfire, and you could put the controller down for four hours and they would never move. They sit there and they, they make you fucking come to them and then they just destroy you because you're fighting in a tiny room against four guys. And literally after 2020 people and then people go into the level and they get killed by an invader and they stop doing that. So you stopped having these organic invasions, which is why I like Elden Ring because it's new right now. People are still playing the level and that is such a fucking refreshing breath of fresh air. Like I stopped playing DS3 because of that, because there were no more organic invasions. It was either go to Pontiff and be a Metal Lord or just fucking stop. Like it was just you would either invade the most ridiculous like ass hurt fucking four man, like murky ganks in TRC bonfire room using scripts and lag switches. Or you would fight one guy who's just a total noob and you would crush him. And there was just no enjoyment to be had. So now in Elden Ring, people are actually playing the fucking levels again. The problem is open world invasions do suck, which you'll get to. And I kind of clowned on him a bit for that. Like open world invasions do suck. 
Because, like, you can't run into the mobs. Like, you'd have to run for, like, a fucking mile, right? So it sucks. PvP, run PvP. So I guess we just agree to disagree. Like, he doesn't like invasions for fighting ganks. I would argue that that is mostly what you should be doing. But in Elden Ring, the ganks are definitely harder than ever. It is ridiculous. And even I get fucking super fed up and pissed off and tilted. It is insane. Like, you have people who think they're good, they're hot shit for just sitting around a bonfire with triple moon veil, right? What are you supposed to do against that? Like, you have two guys moon veiling you. Well, you have one guy way the fuck in the distance firing one shot proc madness frenzy blur sniper shots from a bush that you can't fucking react to the audio because you're so far away. Like, what the fuck are you supposed to do against that, right? But like, I feel like you could have, that's always been a thing. If you have a brain, you can make the impossible gank. I've ganked one time. I ganked with Nap and uh, Jan Sauer. And literally, I put the controller down for 30 minutes and I walked away because I was so fucking bored. And no one touched me in the fair and swamp where you can get three invaders at once. No one touched me. Like, ganking is stupid fucking easy. You could easily make it, like, impossible to beat them. To beat you, right? So, yeah. To be fair, getting ganked fucking blows. And the ganks are so strong at Elden Ring. But at the end of the day, that is why I invade, to spank ganks. It's like you have such a slim chance, like a snowball's chance in hell. And when you do it, it feels so fucking good. Especially when you have like just these shit eating hosts that are like memeing on you with emotes and you throw your whole like fucking inventory of stock dung pies on them, dude. Damn, like I live for that shit. And I think a lot of invaders do live for that shit. But he, like he, if he doesn't like that, that's fine. I, it's just a personal disagreement then. Why does no Fuck, this is slowing down so much, guys. It's gonna be so long. Wanna I'm sorry. I'm I talking too much. In waves of darkness, the host in the middle of the fucking level. Why? Where? Are, is chivalry dead? Is chivalry dead? <laughs> in Dark Souls anons? Should I just take the? I think all invaders get salty. Yeah. Maybe a fucking chill pill. God damn. <laughs> now he's complaining that he can't find the host. This was really this weird to me. That introduced indicators. This stuff. Clearly, this guy spent countless hours. Able Sisters, good music choice. Because he got one parry one time. So what I was trying to say here was that because this game is so massive, you spend half your time during an invasion running around on foot toward the host in an extremely linear fashion. And I was stating that because they disallowed the use of torrent within a multiplayer session, and because these environments were designed with the use of torrent in mind, it becomes a problem fast. This wasn't an issue in previous games, even without the use of an indicator, because of how much smaller the invasion area was in comparison. Why is he bitch? So yeah, like, I guess I kind of understand what he- I mean, like, I guess, yeah, I understand what he's getting at. If the fucking host just legs it the other way, yeah, you have to run after him, and it's fucking annoying. The other thing, too, is at the time, I'm pretty sure his gameplay footage was, the frenzied finger was shit. Like, it wouldn't actually teleport you towards them consistently. Sometimes they would be at the bottom of the canyon and you would use it three times and it would spawn you at the top of the canyon where you can't get to them. So it was broken, so you couldn't use that reliably to get to them, like teleport to them. Now it's better now, but um, I get what he means. Like he's like, I don't know, I guess he didn't, ex maybe I'm misrepresenting him again, but like I think he's getting at that open world invasions just suck. Like it is a lot funner to do invade the legacy dungeons because it's like an old school style of invasion. It's a linear dungeon that they have to get through so you can set up roadblocks and spots where you ambush them and blah, blah. It's just a way better way to invade. Invading an open world sucks. It's, it's, it's just true. Like you don't have PVE support most of the time and it's just annoying. You're just wide open. They're just shooting fucking magic at you. It sucks. There's no cover. It's really ridiculous. The open world invasions suck. And yeah, the frenzy or the teleporting finger is still shit kind of. So I get what he means. But I think he is exaggerating how good the DS3 invasions were because like I said, after 2019, 2020 and on, no one played the level. And the other problem was there was no indicator. I was crying for an indicator to show me where the fucking hosts were because I spent countless invasions where you just like you're in there for 30, depending how pissed off you are, up to an hour. Like an hour looking for people that would hide. You have people that like kill the entire level. Sometimes with a script, they just hit a button. Everything in the world instantly dies. You have no clue where they are and they could just be anywhere and they fucking hide. Like a lot of people troll, ha ha ha, where they just fucking hide in these insane spots. Like, uh, there's a million hiding spots, right? 
And I fucking hated that. When you spawn into a Dead World Rand Archives, you would spend literally an hour looking for one guy. You could do that. He could be all the way at fucking Lothric and shit, or like hiding on the roof. It was insane. You spend way, way less time looking for people on average in Elden Ring, in my opinion. Way less time, you save way more time. If DS3 had a fucking indicator, it would have been perfect. Like, it needed it. It needed it so bad. Oh. But I get what he's- like, when people actually play the level and you have an organic invasion, yeah, you find them really quickly. My, my, the problem is that doesn't really happen anymore, and that's coming from someone who used to invade every single week. It just doesn't happen. It hasn't happened for years. Like, no one plays the level anymore. It really sucks. But, uh, yeah. I think, no. I, in my experience, Elden Ring, you spend infinitely less downtime hunting in hosts, and you spend actually more time in combat, enjoying the combat. But, uh, I could see what he means, though about this and every clip that he shows he and yeah i was pretty confused by this literally less than a second like less than five seconds i'm bitching about this because that's definitely not always the case maybe not in the clip shown in this video to be fair but i've definitely spent over five minutes looking for a host even with the indicator that's supposed to tell me right where he is now i don't know how they could have i mean like you should just like at least show one clip of that right where you're just like where the fuck do I go? Cause like, I, I, I disagree. I feel like you spend way less time hunting down a host in this game. So I, I guess I just disagree. But like, like I said, I understand. I think maybe like his criticism is maybe a little bit misplaced, but I, I understand where he's coming from. Like the open world, we're just like, where is he? Oh, I just got to go that way. And then the, and then the piece of shit's running away. And you're like, fuck, like, you know, I understand where he's coming from on that. To fix this, because if you enable torrent, then that becomes a shit show real fast but it really just goes to show how invasions just don't mesh well with how big Elden Ring's world is and how much more boring they are versus previous games. So yeah. And yeah, he That's what he's getting at. Of birds. Know it. <laughs> Why he's so upset? I just wanted some feathers, man. So the solution here was to Oh, did he think that you could farm animal parts in invasions? That's actually interesting. To at least give you a little marker to follow so that you'd reliably be able to find the host. Yes, but yes. But just no fun at all. If there's anything I've learned. What? I mean, it's a skill. And this is kind of what I just talked about. Inside the level in Dark Souls 3, but is it fun? Absolutely. I think it's like tracking in Monster Hunter. Is it fun? Yeah, like we went, we just went over this. It is fun when it, in an organic invasion, CSIing the level. But in my experience for the last two, three years, it's not a thing that exists in, in DS3 anymore. You just find uh, dead worlds and people hiding. So it used to be great, yeah. It used to be great, but not anymore. It just... And that's the problem. Once people realized that they could just sit at a bonfire for an and just put on an episode of anime on their fucking uh, second monitor, no one played levels anymore. Like, people just refused to do it. It's... Uh, it's... It, it is... It just doesn't happen. Like, it just straight up doesn't happen anymore. I can tell you. It sucks. And that's why I was so frustrated and I quit DS3 twice. Where I just took a year-long break, pretty much. Because I was like, there's just no more organic invasions. And that's why I like this game. Like, you just don't get that. It sucks. Yeah. This was, um, this video is post 1.07. Yeah, because that was like almost a month ago. I haven't touched the game since, but yeah. To run around for 30 minutes trying to... His original video was like 1.03 though. So yeah. Like a lot's changed. Find a fucking dude who's hidden in the Dead World Grand Archives only to find out that they have clipped out of bounds and you literally could not find them. The literal exact same situation you just described has happened to me in Elden Ring. That's not fair not enough, actually. Twice, multiple times. Rooftop campers are the biggest shit show. Moot point. Like, yeah, all games have bugs, dude. Yes, because comparing Elden Ring to an Ubisoft game is a totally fair comparison. That, yeah, that makes so much sense. Can't believe Elden Ring took a page out of Ubisoft's book and made map markers. One single fucking map marker. I was so juiced by this point. Holy fuck, eh? Look how red I am. Setting. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm just rosy. Full Ubisoft on this one. SMH. <laughs> this shiny as fuck. Yes, it's absolutely a fair comparison. How is it not? You have a marker that lazily leads you where you're supposed to go that eventually leads you to an objective in this case being the host. And they did this because they had no better way to have the player figure it out because this game is too massive for its own good. 
Sure, it may only be in a multiplayer context. It's a necessity. It's a video about the PvP. In the multiplayer setting. In the mo Yeah, that's true, but like... That's what I mean, like, it's a necessity, and I think it was a necessity, because Dark Souls 2 had it. Dark Souls 2 had a spell where it'd show you where the host is. I think Dark Souls 3 desperately needed this. At least not like a fucking compass indicator, but like, you could do it like, like the way DS2 did it. Make it a spell, or like an item, or something, like lore, or whatever, you know? I think it desperately needed it, and I'm glad that it's here. I don't even think it's necessity that's uh, coming out of open world games. I think it is a necessity that all Souls games should have in general. Because then you spend a lot less time fucking hi looking for hiders, and you get down to the fighting, the action, cool shit, you know? And I think that Elden Ring did it right. Where it's like, here's the indicator, when you get close though, it disappears. So it's like, okay, I'm in the general vicinity. So I think that's good. Multiplayer setting in the multi And yeah, I just thought it was ridiculous to be like, to just compare it. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Ubisoft has map markers, no one likes Ubisoft games. Like, I get it. There's a map marker mechanics that, that's the same. But comparing FromSoft's game design philosophy to Ubisoft's is like, that's like a bit ridiculous to me still. Hey, what's up, sweetie? How you doing? Using Rosaria's finger. What the fuck is my OBS doing? Should have spawned a thing that floated towards the host? Absolutely. In Karthus Catacombs, you guys know the pots that you can break in those little Dark Souls, whatever the fuck they are? Those dregs? They come out and they fly towards the host. They track towards the host no matter how far they are in, in Karthus Catacombs. So if you can't find them as an invader because they're fucking hiding on some obscure ledge uh, and they're just waiting for you to come to them because they really hate invaders and especially the people that consider invaders worse than actual rapists and home invaders like they fucking will do anything to like spoil your day you can actually hit the jar and the, the dreg will come out and it'll fly towards where they are so you'll know like what level they're on and stuff something like that would be extremely cool because like I said there is a problem where like 99% of your time in an invasion, in DS3 especially, and I find it infinitely less in Elden Ring, could be spent just walking around a fucking level, being like, where the fuck is he? It was ridiculous. I could do a six hour stream and kill like fucking 12 people. It was literally insane. Like it was, it was stupid as fuck. So like, yeah, I, I think Elden Ring was a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, open world invasions really suffer. Like, it sucks. But that's why I prefer invading the legacy dungeons. I just invade Rai Lucaria, Elfel, and shit like that. I have a way better time. Make up your mind! Do you not like looking for the host? Or do you? Are you saying that Elden Ring, you're just looking for the host with all the clips of you? I'm just going off the rails. In less than five seconds, but you're saying you like Dark Souls 3 because it makes you look for the host? But even though it's more of looking for the host, you enjoy that more. But you hate Elden Ring because you spent too much time looking for the host. The Frenemies podcast? Oh, no. No. I don't know if it's because I've been watching this video for too long, but God, can someone explain to me what he just said? Um, I mean, okay, so like I was confused, I guess, by how you presented it. But like, um, honestly, props to this guy for sitting through a 26 minute video where I'm just going like ape shit. Like, I'm literally just popping off and just shitting on everything he says. So, like, the fact that he sat through it, like, that's got to be an uncomfortable watch. So, like, you got to give him credit. And the other thing is, yeah, so I guess we just disagree on that, where he says that, like, as you know, like, looking, like we said, uh, CSIing the level, seeing what enemies are getting hit and finding the host in DS3 was great. But, unfortunately, that system can be highly, highly abused. And basically, organic invasions have been dead for years in Dark Souls 3 because of it. So I'm glad that it's been fixed here. But yeah, we both actually do prefer that old uh, method where you would do it like that. The problem is it doesn't pan out that way anymore, in truth. Uh, so I guess my confusion was that I spend, you know, literally an hour in an invasion looking for one person. But he understands DS3 invasions to have less downtime of finding the host. So that's where my confusion came from, was that, in my mind... DS3 invasions are way, way, way more time spent looking for the host than actually fighting the host. Uh, whereas in Elden Ring, it's much, like, much less than that. But he disagrees. He thinks he spends, he says that he spends more time in Elden Ring looking for the host than he did in Dark Souls 3. So that's where the confusion came from. And that's why I was just like, what the fuck is, I'm like, what is he talking about? And also it didn't help, like I said, that he was only showing clips of him finding the host in less than five seconds. Like all his clips, literally. So I was just like, Okay, like, I, I don't get where you're coming from, right? So that was my confusion. 
but you know i feel like you know again positive criticism i feel like you should have just tried to get some footage of you just like wandering around looking for the hose because you don't have to spend that much in time invading to do that especially if you invade riot lucaria you walk around you're like where the fuck is this guy and you're like oh he's a fucking rooftop camper who's like a hundred miles above me what an asshole so like I, you know you know, just put in a little bit more time, just get the footage that backs up, you know, what you're saying. It helps a lot. It, it does go a long way. Like, there are people that watch the video without, like, you know, just side monitoring it and not watching the gameplay, right? Broken. Ooh, God, I just got shit on. Gravitated towards then you. Yeah, he got fucking popped. Let me see that yellow damage. <laughs> uh. <laughs> just said. It's just that I feel like there's. What happened here? So we got hit by an L1? That's an R1. Some really broken Did he quick step? I don't understand. It's just that I feel like there's some really broken- Oh, he panic rolled. And that's the other thing. Panic rolling is just way more punished in this game with the input buffering and the higher damage. So yeah, bleeding, like, yeah, it's true. There is more broken shit in Elden Ring, which sucks. But like, like I said, there is broken shit in all the games and that will never change. People will crutch on a million things. You will always be fighting people, even if they're not like gankers that are doing unscaled glitch ganks, like, you know? You'll still find people like that are host duelists. I was just watching Coop fight a fucking duelist yesterday who was fully rune arced and like using, and just like super shit net. Like, you'll always find people stacking every advantage they can. You will fucking find everyone Embered HB, Bonfire Dueling in the Ring City, unironically doing Murky Main. Like, it's ridiculous. And if you start beating them, they start fap running around with like infinite stamina. You will always find people like that. That's a, a, just a tale as old as time. But yes, there are way, I know he's going to say it, but like there are fucking way more balance issues in Elden Ring. Like, the balance in Elden Ring is fucked. But my point is that if you. Remember, back to Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 3 was also extremely imbalanced on its launch. Like, it took a long time to get it to a fucking, a, a, a pretty good state. Again, Elden Ring is more broken than DS3 was, but that's just how these games go. And if you look at it nowadays, they have made fucking massive strides, huge improvements that we've been asking for. It is amazing, and it's phenomenal, and I'm really excited. Because I think by the time the DLC comes out, it'll be in an extremely playable state. I'm really uh, optimistic on the future of Elden Ring, which is a far cry from wh where we were all like fucking six months ago or whatever. At launch, everything is broken. The game is literally unplayable. PvP is dead on arrival. So yeah. Anyway, I got to piss so bad because I just drank like three of these. So uh, give me a second. Gravitated towards than usual, especially yep. when it comes to PvP. No, that's that's total horse. That is complete horse. It is not more than usual. Bleed was still broken at launch on DS3, and guess what? Everyone gravitated towards it. Every motherfucker in their nan had a. Those hollow were dark times. Build. Karthus Rouge hollow build. The thing is, I'm not just talking about bleed, I'm talking about Bloodhound Step, the insane magic spells, the madness status ailments, Scarlet Rot, I don't know. Preach, Some preach. Some disagree, but I just was not a fan of the PvP in this game. So. It was totally busted. PvP was dead on arrival, straight up. apparently has a problem with f***ing Monster Hunter, Elden Ring, Xenoblade so yeah. Chronicles. So yeah, like I said, there is way more broken shit in Elden Ring, but... People will always gravitate towards the broken shit and crutch on it. It's just a thing that people do. Like a big reason that people like the PvP in this games are polar opposites. There's people like me who like invasions where you're trying to overcome insurmountable odds and it's just so stacked against you. But on the other hand, there are people that just play it because it's an absolute power fantasy. Like you can make yourself fucking so much like stronger than your opponents if you just want to host, right? You can summon guys and the like, people that think they're legitimately good in Dark Souls 3 for having four man ganks with three unscaled glitch phantoms and they think they're good. Like it is an absolute, it is the sword art online of games. People, it's like the only game I can think of where you could just so stack so much shit in your favor and like whether it's intended or not by the game, glitches and everything, and just completely shit on everything and like have a like fucking 100% win rate. And you could pat yourself on the back and think you're good. I think a lot of people like the game because of that. Because you, there's not other games where you can just so one-sidedly stomp another human being, regardless of skill level. 
So, you know. But, uh, and then we already talked about this. Like I said, more of like positive criticism for him. I think what he's going for is that his, the problem with is like a series. Like that's his like thing, that's his brand. What I saw that as is that he's just a guy who nitpicks and just like focuses only on negative aspects of games. So, sorry for shitting on your content. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Monster Hunter again, <laughs> Final Fantasy Ninja VII, Turtles. Sonic, Street Fighter, Diablo. I'm sorry, that's just so funny. The problem with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. Sonic again. And uh, yeah, what is he going to hate on next? Fucking uh, Purple Place? Come on. I should like Purple Place. I don't know why this guy's even still on my channel at this point, dude. How to fix him. Oh no, we should watch his top five worst bosses video. <laughs> Oh no! Did I make it that loud? Five worst bosses. Here we go. Holy shit, that was loud. There's a lot of great bosses in Elden Ring. I'm surprised this guy likes a single boss in this game, honestly. I can't even win with this guy when I praise the game. Holy shit. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I like was coming at it where I'm like already of the mindset where I'm like, he just hates this game. Like fuck, he just like weirdly hates Elden Ring. But to be fair, probably he's not like that, right? But like Again, you can understand how looking at your content when you, you see like a bunch of videos like that are negatively focused on Elden Ring, I just immediately get the impression that, oh, you just don't like this game at all. And that's why I, had, I was like hard to believe, like like the Radon video, right? You just like complain about the boss for the whole video and then at the end you're like, I really like this game though. And it just, it's hard for me to like believe that, you know? But to be fair, he, he can like not like certain aspects of the game and like other aspects. Likes Placidusax and Rikard? I am Honestly, Rikard was one of my favorite bosses the first time I played the yeah. game. I thought it was fucking awesome. I loved how cinematic it was. Oh, thank God he agrees with me on something. Yeah, so we do agree really there. Two out of 166 bosses. Down your pitchforks. I'm just I think it was 166. Cool bosses. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Quick yeah, again, I don't this is the impression I got from his videos. 20 videos lambasting this entire game and all the bosses. Yeah, you got my ass there, I guess. Hey, I had my fair share of problems with Elden Ring's bosses, but honestly, I only ever shit on the ones towards the end. I really enjoyed all the people in the beginning. Renala, Margit, Godfrey, all the different variations of the dungeon bosses were really cool. Okay, we've heard him be Fair enough. Yeah, like, uh, and then, yeah, like, people are like, and people think that I defend the, um, the copy-paste bosses. No, repeated bosses suck. But, like, at the other, on the other side of the token, it's okay because I don't want them to delete all the side content and shit like that. And I don't expect them to make 160 unique bosses. They already, even if you don't include any of the repeat bosses, they still have more unique bosses than any game they've ever done. And, like I've said, the combat is much more deep. Like, the jumping is a whole new dimension to the combat. It's, like, that big of a deal. So, I just, I don't know, yeah, that's all that. Rinala's queen, respect, exactly, like, people like, uh, especially shit on Elden Beast, and I think that's his number one, but, um, I think he says Elden Bitch. I 100% understand why people don't like Elden Beast, or even, um, like, Radon. But, I think, like I said, I, I can appreciate what they went for. With Elden Beast, Rinala, and Ancestral Spirit, and to an extent, Estelle, they didn't make it with, like, they, if they made every boss the same way, it would be samey, right? Like, Morgoth has combo flow charts, whereas Fire Giant just does single attacks, right? And I think with those style of bosses, I, I talk about this in the video. What am I fucking talking about? Bitch and moan in the problem with Elden Ring. We've heard him bitch and moan with the problem with PvP. We've heard him bitch and moan in the worst. Scrap boss is being brought back. Also, a tree spirit. They could have left that one out. I mean, I don't mind it as much anymore, though. Like, now that I've learned them, but like, it's a weird ass boss, and they shouldn't have used it that much. Top five worst bosses. I gotta admit, this is actually pretty hilarious. Good one, Lupin. Lupine, whatever your freaking name is. First Whatever, all, I don't mind. I'll just say my Either way. Sense about regal ancestral spirit. Lupine. Boss. Fucking Endo always calls me fucking Lupine no matter what. Lupine used to be Lupine Ossuary. Loopy, Loopy Poopy. I got a lot of names. Actually, I like, like, like that's why a lot of my usernames I use are ambiguous. I like having names that can be read a bunch of different ways. Like I have, like my Discord name for a lot of servers is it's in brackets, not lupus. Because, well, I don't want to get into it for the reasons why, because I don't want to spoil too much about myself. But, like, you know, like, whatever. What, what am I talking about? Let's just keep going. Total bull. 
the roll attack is Radon's my favorite boss solo. He's great, but he has the most strength. Like fucking Radon is my favorite boss, and yet still at this point in the run, he is still the king of the bullshit. He has three things about him that are completely horseshit RNG. That being his shockwave that often gets hung up on terrain. The fact that he can actually frame trap you if you're at a medium range with his meteorites because he can throw the meteorites at you and then do a jumping attack and that can literally frame trap you. And the third thing is that if you're behind him at the shockwave or at close range, I have footage of me standing underneath it and not getting hit. And then I have footage of me being literally behind him and the shockwave comes out invisibly and in, in the ground. And so the hitbox is huge around him, but there's no animation. So there's th like Radon has like a lot of bullshit, but I see he's still my favorite boss. So you take the good with the bad. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? Funnily enough, I don't even know what attack he's talking about here. I thought all this boss's attacks were totally fine. But no. I definitely yeah. agree with him when it comes to the atmosphere of this boss. I gotta stop pausing. Right up untouchable. Okay, so yeah, actually everything else is fine. He just does. That is a big pro. This is also another projection on my part where I see him with the power stance moon veils. I see it so much. It's like the you guys have all seen it. All the variety streamers have the most copy pasted army of the clone shit builds where chat's like use dub power. St it's like Oro's chat all over again. Use power stance katanas. It's so good, dude. Use double power stance frost Uchi. And so people do that. And then I watched I watched a variety streamer actually a couple of weeks ago who first tried Moog. He didn't first try Moog, but he, he beat Moog for the first time and he phase skipped phase two. He literally did not even see Moog's second phase. He hit him uh, six times. When he was transforming, he caught Moog when he does the the second, like Unos, Duos, whatever. And then he did Trace and then he transformed, right? And so he got up to him and he L1'd him six times with Power Stance Katanas. And the boss died from like 65% HP. He fucking nuked Mo through the heels. He popped them with like two bleeds and just roasted them. He never fought Mo in second phase. Like that is stupid as fuck. And so like when I see him with power stance moon veils against ancestral spirit who has like really low HP, you could easily phase skip all the heals by just popping them, even as a total beginner. And so that's why I was like, hey, you're just miss, but you're missing out on it a little bit, you know? I mean, you can do that. You can make haha -ha, like one shot builds like you do in every game. But like, I don't know, you, you can get, I mean, some people like that. Some people try that and they find that it's actually super boring to play like that. I don't like doing that, but you can play however you want. So whatever. But uh, anyway, yeah, this is the, I'll show you the move. This is the problem I have where people like bring up hitless runners when they really don't understand how the game like works that well to begin with, let alone on, from like a hitless standpoint. So. Yeah, like, I don't know, like when people complain that like, oh, like I talked about this, right? People don't complain, oh, Regal Ancestral Spirit's hitbox on his roll attack is like inconsistent. They say like Margit has undodgeable frame trap attacks, which makes no sense, right? So like when people like are saying the game is too hard and then they bring up hitless runners, like I really think that has no place in the discussion at all because it's totally different. And like hitless runners want the game to be hard. Why do you think we try to beat the game without taking a single hit? We want a really hard challenge, right? So, again, like most of the bullshit you will never experience unless you hitless run. And that's why a lot of people don't realize that Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne and all the other games, Sekiro's probably the cleanest, have tons of fucking jank and RNG. And that's why it's so crushing when you do a challenge run, a no-hit run of Dark Souls 3, let's say, and you get hit and it's your fault because it is so depressing that you died as a fault of your own when you were on a run that had good RNG. So like, yeah, you could point to Hob doing the entire series back to back to back, but that's insane. He does that as a full-time job. And like, it, it really is RNG based. If you watch Hob's hits, you will see, a, he will do a strat that he has done thousands of times. And then one time, just randomly, an enemy will aggro on him and stab him in the ass. Like just completely random one in 2000 times, it'll happen. Like that is the story of hitless running, right? So when you play a game, you are not going to notice that. Like no one's going to notice that Regal Ancestral Spirit has an inconsistent roll attack hitbox, right? No one's going to notice like that God Godric's fucking wind, the wind attack can get stuck on a tombstone and you can roll into it. No one's going to fucking pick up on the shit because it's so rare. But that's something that you have to account for when you're doing a hitless run. So for the layman, 
99% of the time, you will never. this will never affect you. But if you're a hitless runner, this is a problem. So shit like that. That's why when you have hitless runners complaining about Melania and stuff like that, they're not even talking about the same thing as you typically, right? So that's the thing. Yeah, poor hitless runners, eh, Nathan? Ugh, yeah. And like, and like, why? And like, it's weird enough, like, that that should be an expectation of a game. Like, does that make the game necessarily better? That they should intentionally make it so that you can scrap 90% of the tools and options in this game, play in the most bare bones fucking way, and still be able to 100% consistently hitless the entire game without leveling up in an RPG. And that's the other thing. If we're just talking about hitless running, this fucking game's a cakewalk. You can just get such high damage that you just fucking nuke everything in this game without having to worry about any of this shit. So it's like when we're talking about hit, like we're talking hitless without upgrades, without upgrading the weapon either in an RPG. Like, is that something we should expect from an RPG? It's supposed to be hard. Not necessarily, but we keep doing it because we can find a way. That's part of the fun, uncovering new strats and shit. Like I said, I discovered that way to dodge Rikard where you jump over the corpse files. I think I'll show you. Uh, where's the fucking attack? Oh, does, can someone find the clip for me on my Twitch of me getting hit by the roll attack? Because it looks fucked. It's really fucked up. Melania hitless players. Melania has some problems because everyone else. Let me guess. Heal on hit. Waterfowl undodgeable does too much damage. No. Yeah, no. More that she's very unpolished, right? Like, I think Swagapagos has a very great series of critiques on Melania. And, like, even though I disagree with them, like, I don't mind the posture immunity system as badly. He thinks it's like a cardinal sin, and that's fine. Like, that's totally... Like, I don't think Melania is, a, is like, their best design boss at all. She definitely could have been way more engaging and polished. But she did succeed at being, like, the most hardest, insane challenge that they've ever done. So in that regard, they succeeded, but she's kind of just eh. Like, she's, uh, <laughs> she's crazy. And, like, yeah, it's not intuitive to know that you should go ham on her and not care about her healing on hit. Like, that was my big problem with Melania learning her, is that... I would play super passive to try and never get hit so that she would gain health. But then I would actually fucking, uh, oh, thank you so much, Brood. Then uh, I literally control F the word roll and I couldn't find it. What the fuck? Um, yeah, so Melania, no, I'm not a Melania stand at all. I think she's definitely far from their best boss in this game. She's gotta be low on the list of shard bears, honestly. Here, this is the goat roll. That's unbelievable. Oh, it's a goat. We're fucked, boys. This attack is so fucked. Thank God he doesn't heal infinitely. Like his heals start to do way less. Or like heal less. No! Like what the fuck? Like what is that? What is that? What is that? That's so fucking filthy. Look at this shit. I'm light rolling in this. No! Fuck that attack, dude! I said we're fucked and we're fucked. And that happens a lot. Actually, was I light rolling? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I was. That attack is fucked. It is fucked. So yeah, there is a lot of jank when it comes to hitless, but that doesn't have any bearing on your average playthrough, typically. And like, that's what I mean. It's fucking bizarre to me when people are like, Malekith is undodgeable and like stuff like that. But like, he's not. And then the thing is, people are like, oh, but you, like, I'm like, here's a guide. Here, just learn how to dodge it if you don't know. And they're like, you just read guides. I don't want to have to do a college course on how to fucking do a boss. I'm like, I don't use the guides. You're the one bitching about it being undodgeable when you haven't fucking used your eyeballs to figure it out. So here you go, you know? Like, the, like it was kind of unfortunate that I dropped that Malekith Hitless guide because I wanted to showcase how, like, diehard members of the community put in tons of work to do these insanely detailed guides. But then people interpreted that as like, I just read a guide to Hitless Malekith. When actually, what I did was I challenged myself in the Anderson video to sit down and I'm like, how unreasonable is it to truly learn this on your own? Because I never figured out how to do the up close waterfowl dodge uh, on my own. I used Bloodhound Step in my first playthrough. So I was like, how unreasonable is it? And Malekith was a boss that was still perplexing to me. So what I did was I went at half the level you should to drag out the fight. 
And then I just sat down for three hours, and within three hours, I learned how to hitless the boss and have super optimized punishes, which you can see in the gameplay footage. And so, like, I think it is pretty reasonable to just learn that on your own. Like, you don't have to read a guide, but if you're gonna bitch about it, you can be like, okay, this is too much time investment for me to have fun. That's fine. But um, if you're gonna say that's a fault of the game, I mean, it's kind of a fault of you, I think. Like, you should put in more effort or just, you know, don't, if you don't like the game, that's fine. You just not play it. You like complaining that it's the game's fault for being too hard? That's the thing. They're always, they never say that it's too hard. They're always like, oh, the design is poor and blah, 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 blah. But really, when you like, especially when you talk to people in the comments, at the end of the day, it does like actually know this, this, this. And then that's usually what it boils down to. I don't want to have to put that amount of time and effort into doing this game. So it's like, okay, well, like it's too hard for you to enjoy it. Like, that's fine. It's like, that's totally fine. But like, just say it, you know? Don't like fucking blame the developers and the game. Like, you know? So whatever. Uh, anyway, I'm getting really sidetracked again. Fuck me. Anyway. Like the heel. Whoop de doo. Hey, news. What's most annoying to me is when people use my kills as proof that a boss is 100% consistent, talking to me about how I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. When you are hitless, like you did a rune level one hitless run, right, Naven? You did a whole start to finish hitless run of all the bosses in Elden Ring. That is fucking insane to me. Like, because I would maybe try that with like DS3 and stuff. I would never do that in a million years for Elden Ring because of input dropping. If I fucking lost the run to Radagon with an input drop, I would fucking lose my shit. And like that, there's problems about the game. Like there is inconsistencies. There's also like a lot more attacks that are like, just really fucking iffy but i mean like the other games have a lot of that too and like yeah people think that like the game is that like i think the problem is that like people point to the other games and they look at all the hitless uh accomplishments that the community has done and they say look that was 100 percent consistent but in actuality it's not that is not as far from the truth the fucking nitty-gritty truth about hitless running is that it's about 10% persistence and 90% game knowledge. You have the game knowledge. Now you literally just have to put in the effort to just grind. It's not, I mean, like it is a skill level thing too, but if it's about like, you know, knowing is half the battle kind of shit. And then you literally just sit there and you put in the time until you get it. That's it. Like it's more of an exercise in like uh, your endurance than it is like the game being 100% consistent and being a skill test. That's the, that's the unfortunate truth. But uh, not to downplay hitless running and stuff. Like, I don't fucking hitless run. I draw the line there. I think, uh, I, I think I probably could, but like, I don't really want to, to be honest. Like fucking, like Kevin had a, se a series where he was like, anyone can hitless DS3. And he just started hitless running for no reason. And like, <laughs> he was just total PvP player. <laughs> like, it's like, if you want to put in the time, you can do it. And it's not, it's not as much effort as people conflate it to be. You know, it's not going to take your entire life to do it. Or anything like that. Flash, you fucking heal. Yeah, you heal. That doesn't mean the boss fucking should. Especially when he has an area of effect around him that damages you while he heals so you can't get near him. And don't forget the fact that they disabled the use of torrent during this fight, so he just loves to teleport away from you and you just gotta consistently run to close the distance just like with 50% of the other bosses in this game. <laughs> yeah, let's just say the healing is the only thing that I hated. That's the thing, like, I don't think that many bosses you have to run for, but, like, uh, like, Madeir I find I run for more than any of these bosses, even, like, Elden Beast. I don't know, I thought that was an annoying gimmick, and it pissed me off. Fair enough. I mean, you could just not like that. I think the heal, it was built for the heal system, because this boss has really low HP, so, like, you would nuke him if he didn't have the heal. You could just compensate by deleting the heal and making the fucking health bar bigger. But, like, the thing is, that's part of the ambiance of this fight. Like the whole spirit animals, him killing them all, being reborn, healing. Like, that's a big theme of the fight. So, like, if you, like, don't like to heal, you're kind of... It's like... That's, like, the thematic thing of the fight, right? Like, that's, like, the big thing. But, I mean, like, the AoE doesn't do too much damage. You can get away from it fairly easily. But, again, like, he... I think he wants to, like, heal punish. Like, he should be able to heal punish that. When, actually, you have to run away and just sit there. If you had a ranged option, you could easily punish with that. But then he teleports away, right? Uh, so like you could again more ranged options just pep room with boulders or something, you know But uh, yeah, you know, I mean this is totally subjective like you can not like this boss for 100% I just disagree That it's as simple as that we disagree about a video game enough to where I wanted him at number five, but 
Hey. Also, I got into the hit list running a little bit early, but that's what I end the video with. Actually, never mind. Wait, what? You'd probably put them all in your top 200. Got <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> top 200 elder bosses. <laughs> Number 200, ulcerated tree spirit. Number 199, ulcerated tree spirit. Number 198. Number one, ulcerated tree spirit in the snow peaks ruins. <laughs> yeah, if I had to make a short list uh, off the top of my head, favorite bosses in descending order, uh, Radon, Malekith, Radagon, Rykard, and what the fuck's the fifth one? Can I think of it right now? Oh, Moog. And then worst bosses? This was where I had a, it, I, it was a little bit weird for me on the um, making it a top five list because he includes the duo Crucible Knights and Godskin duo. So it's like, if I was doing it, I would have just lumped in all of the fucking duo fights together, honestly. Because it, it doesn't really add a lot of depth to the combat. It's just kind of like an excuse to use the Spirit Ashes. Like I said, I think I probably go over this in the video. But like I've said, I think the Spirit Ashes are not in the game for me. I think like the duo fights exist because they're like, okay, the fans are like suicidal. We got to put the game out. Just make some duo fights. We have this spirit summon system. What do they do? I think that's what the, the point of the duo fights are. No one likes the duo fights. They suck. But if you use the spirit summons and you don't give a shit, it's whatever, right? It's not like a super engaging skill test boss. But I find like, and that's the thing. So I would have just lumped them all together. And then the other thing is, like I say, if you're gonna pick one of the fucking duo fights, I think Crucible Knight is one of the better ones. They are oppressive, but the, the Crucible Knight is a very deep enemy, and like, uh, there's a lot to like, there's a lot of nuance to them in the way that you can fight them. They're one of the probably the best designed, just general enemies in the game. So, I was a little bit weird that he chose a uh, dual Crucible Knight, like duo, I fucked up, I said duo Erdtree Sentinel, which, to be fair, is kind of a weird fight too, the one at the gates. I meant to say Erdtree, um, the Burial Watchdogs. Like the one in the Kalid cave? That's just fucking dumb. They're just jumping around, pogoing ever like the Pixar fucker. Like, that's just a stupid ass fight. Even that's not too bad. You just do running attacks with a heavy thrusting sword or do a hundred million things, whatever. It's just a lame fight. And like, what's another shit duo fight? Like, there's just so many shit duo fights, I feel like, that this one was a bit strange that it was his choice. But whatever. That's It's his list, right? He's right. I should just make my own list. It, this is his list. That's why I was a little bit head-scratchered on this choice. The other ones, I'm pretty sure were pretty okay. Like duo fights. The other picks. Remember when I mentioned his move? Is it duo fights or he doesn't? Oh, this is my music. Fight. Like, I don't get it. Here, I'll clarify. <laughs> Any duo fight in this game is straight up ass. Oh, this is good. Light on his own is fine. The Erdtree Sentinel on its own is fine. But when they control C, control V, two bosses, and they have them both coming at you at once. This song's bang. It just doesn't feel like these bosses were made to challenge you in tandem. Literally, like I said, go watch my endgame bosses video. I think I did watch that video, but I don't remember much of it. Welcome to oh. the time, we're already here. Hey, side effect, how's it going? Thanks for the raid. Hey, I was actually talking about you earlier. We were talking about how watching you play DS3 and having you watch me uh, play DS2 made me realize that we play, that a lot of us play these games and like them for completely opposite reasons. That was a big revelation to me after playing DS2. Does he have his music in his description? Shit. This song's banger. This sounds like an Ace Combat song. Welcome. Welcome, Raiders. You guys like my ghost merch, by the way? I am the fucking ghost I worship. Go. Going. No ghost way. is a fucking giant fucking, uh... He won't say, but he's a huge Death Grips fan. Love him. Hey, thanks for the sub, dude. Much love. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Thirsty, thank you for gifting a sub to our boy Sidey. Thank you, thank you. We are um, trying to get through this response video in a timely manner, which I am failing at because I like to nitpick and talk out of my ass. Well, not talk out of my ass. I like to run on. I like to talk a lot. But, uh, Cream of the crop. hey, Bama, thanks for the, thanks for the follow. Much love. So, uh, uh, the Spark Notes version is I, I got really drunk and I made this, like, fucking video clowning on this guy. And he took it very seriously and he got upset and he made a response to it. So I figured, I'm a man. I think you should take uh, responsibility for your actions and own up to what you did. And so I think that the least we could do is watch his response video, 
try not to dramatize it too big and like make it a big fucking drama situation but we should at least hear him out he wanted to give extra context and stuff so like we should listen to him and just hear what he has to say you know so that's what we're doing and we're almost through it and we've actually the last few things we actually found out that we agree on actually so probably a lot of that was just me misunderstanding shit being confused and drunk but also uh yeah a little bit of me just coming into it being like all right i'm just gonna clown on this guy right so there was a little bit of that going on too is that what i have extra tags on the stream unrelated to this yeah i love reading comments about me so there was one guy hold on where the fuck is it <laughs> i can actually just find it i love this shit uh where the hell is it uh holy shit it's so small wait can i open the original there we go not gonna lie i was waiting for someone to make a video on this dude lupine os has to be one of the most toxic man childs i have ever seen in the souls community the way he reacts to your points is so over the top true he's acting like you murdered his pet i am being exaggerated but like <laughs> you know come on when all you did was criticize the game fair enough i feel like a lot of the criticisms were missed but he did there was a lot that i did misunderstand uh, blah 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 the amount of points you take your time your points out of context is asinine then again i really don't think i did it just comes from a level of confusion like he explained himself a little bit more in this that helped me out a lot but also like i don't try to misrepresent people i try to summarize and paraphrase so that i can understand what they're saying but when it's confusing or when i get it wrong or whatever it sounds like i'm trying to intentionally misrepresent them for a like just for a laugh which i wouldn't do but that is what happened so whatever you could say that is what happened like i said we still disagree on many of these points but there are a lot of things that we actually agree on too video is more of a personal attack than joe than a proper critique that was the thing too like i did clown on joseph a bit but like you gotta say like it's not like i was just personally attacking him it's one thing and like that's the other thing too making fun of a guy's videos is one thing but like you know clowning on someone's like gameplay footage like you're like you know making fun of their skill level in a video game you just got to be a baby if you're like upset by that like we're talking about like someone playing a game you know it's not like i'm like this guy's mom's a whore you know like i'm not fucking insulting him i'm just saying like we disagree about a video game so like that's why i like getting heated about it because it's like it's meaningless you know it's harmless and uh yeah i've already talked about that but uh what else what else the epitome of the souls fanboy who thinks he is an elite gamer and like i said I don't think I'm good. The reason I challenge or I challenge on these games is to show you that anyone can fucking do this. I play this game less than a lot of these fucking whiners do. And fucking like I can do it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Like all it takes is two eyeballs and a fucking brain and a heartbeat. You can learn how to hit list these games. Like it's not a huge deal. But people make it out to be like this impossible fucking in, like insanely hard bullshit game, you know? Oh, and also they say that you guys enable me. <laughs> And let's get that straight. I don't, chat doesn't enable me. I enable chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, apparently I'm a bigger tumor on the community than someone like Tam or fucking, uh, or, um, Revan <laughs> or, <coughs> or, uh, you know, like a million other people. <laughs> but like, that's the thing. I get a lot of heat for being an elitist because I guess people think I have a superiority complex. But my argument is that people that whine about this game, they, they have a higher ego attachment to their, their skill level in this game than I do. Like, you can, like, who cares? It's a fucking game. Like, it's meaningless, right? But, like, that's why people get so upset in invasions and, like, they'll say that invaders are literally, in, like, IRL rapists and home invaders. Like, worse than that. Like, they think that. And that's because they are so upset that someone kills them in a video game or, like, stuff like that, right? So I think that's where a lot of this comes from, is that people just have such an ego attachment and like a self-worth attachment to their skill level in video games, that them dying in a game or being worse than, like, people are just better than other people at video games. Like, just fucking accept it. Like, I'm probably better than a lot of these people playing this game. That's just a fact. Like, it's not the end of the world. Like, but people get so upset and they say that the, it's the game's fault, that they can't, like, that they can't enjoy it at the hardest difficulty, like, trying to hit list it or just doing a melee only build or whatever that is, right? They get so upset about the game. They get so upset at invasions when they fucking get killed by an invader. Even though it's a game. Like, it's insane to me that people get... They still get upset about these games, about dying in it. When, like, that's the entire point of the game is, like, learning through trial and error. And overcoming, like, these, like, huge odds and getting better. Legitimately getting better. 
to like overcome this once impossible like task. I don't know. It's just really bizarre to me. But yeah, like I don't know why. I, I like people think that I'm an elitist gatekeeper. And it's like I'm literally just trying to clear the muddied waters that people are always fucking like shitting into whenever these games are released so that more people can understand how the game actually works and will actually give it a shot. And like, you know, they don't have to worry about all this misinformation like is poise working? Is it disabled? Like all this shit. Are the bosses actually RNG and are totally random? Like, you know, people should know, I feel like. So anyway, I don't think I don't have a superiority complex. Like it's just the game skill. Like that's just that's just what it is, you know? Like, I think that a lot of people are mad that the game's too hard. And like, that's, it, that's just the truth. It's just too hard. Like, that's the thing. I'm not saying Quick is like bad at the game or anything like that. But I think that people should be honest that if they don't think that like, if you say an attack is undodgeable and you say, no, it isn't. And they're like, well, I don't want to have to spend two hours to learn how to dodge that attack. Like, that's just a you problem. Like, you know, so you're saying it's too hard then. It's too much time investment. To get that good to be have to like be worth it and have fun so it's whatever i'm getting really fucking sidetracked again so let's just keep moving video to see why I it's not a crime yeah like i don't like i don't care if you're bad at the game if you are going to then make a bunch of videos about a game and and you're spreading misinformation like i might ridicule you a bit and i might fucking try to correct that and i mean in this one i went ham on him like you did like in the anderson video i did it better like, I, like, I, I kind of take the piss out of Anderson, but I think that video was pretty fair. And even then, there's more that I wish I could have said, but whatever. And Smo from Dark Souls 1. Like, especially, like, I found that even more, like, all the attacks are just clearly dodgeable in this game. Like, it's just the truth. How much better that works. He does three... No. Okay, and sorry, sorry I got on that huge tangent, but yeah, we just 100% had the same... We were just confused then, I guess, on that, on that point. All the, all the dual fights suck. He did 116 damage with a heavy- This I'm curious about. Claymore ...in the end game. I do more damage with a jumping attack on my Zweihander at rune level 1 with an upgraded weapon. So what the f*** is this guy's build? And that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Strength builds in this game were absolutely god-awful. No, no. Bad. I had a lot of strength by this- Strength point. builds are actually the best build in the game. Useless. To the point where I unless you're doing full mage and that made my time with the game so much easier i'm sure i'll get comments that talk about their experience where their strength build was just absolute badassery and yeah. i believe you i just wonder if the devs made some adjustments by the time the rest of you played that made strength builds more viable but i can't say for certain that's a fair thing to wonder that is beast how the that is a that is a fair thing to wonder and i wonder that a lot too um, but like, and I think a lot of people, not in this case, but like a lot of people sometimes write off like, oh, that was a different patch. Like they're not fundamentally changing the way bosses and stuff work. Like they might've increased the recovery time on the Colossals on one patch, or they might've like tweaked Melania's HP by a little bit, but that doesn't like inherently mean that they, th they agree that Melania was busted. Like they're not fundamentally changing how the game works. And strength builds are still good because the posture system. And also, uh, yeah, it's just... You just, you get lots of like fire resistance and shit like that, I'm pretty sure. Strength builds get spells now too, there's that. So like, I guess we just disagree on that. I, I could see how you would like play a strength build and feel underwhelmed and look at some dude playing like a fucking mage build and they're casting like Renala Ice Moon at a boss and just nuking the shit out of it. I could see how you get that impression. But if you look into it, strength builds are the best. They're the most stat, like, you know, you just get the best wet rounded stats, you get the most damage. You know, great spears, you get tons of shit. Like a lot of stuff does well with strength, even though like, even the lighter weapons. So there's that. Uh also you can use the strings, you can use the status effects. And what else did he just say? Oh, so I don't know. Like, yeah, he was I don't so I guess he didn't say why, but like I, he must have had like a really just kind of all over the place build, I guess. Cause I was legit doing more damage than him at room level one plus zero. So I don't know. To be fair, he was attacking the strong ankle and I do jumping attacks on the weak ankle. Probably does a lot, but it's still crazy to me that I was doing double the damage. I was doing 320 on an R jumping Zweihander R2 and he was swinging. I don't really know the damage modifiers on the on the mounted shit, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. The other thing too is that, I don't know. 
Eh, whatever. It's not even worth it. I raffle stomp and game on a cold infusion build. That's the other thing too. Do cold infusion. And the other cool thing too is that fire builds in this game, uh, sorry, strength builds have access to fire builds. And that's another thing that people sleep on. I keep hearing this complaint that like, uh, and like, so he complained that he had to respect, which I think is an okay thing to do if you want. I mean, he didn't want to do that, which is fair. And like, I never respect in my first playthrough. But like, I keep hearing this one in particular, and I don't know why. Everyone keeps saying that their faith build gets hard cut by the late game. So like bosses like Malekith and Radagon and Elden Beast, which is kind of funny because holy damage is kind of the new dark damage. Most people don't have a high holy defense resist, so it does a fuck ton of damage. But the thing is, the end game bosses, yeah, they're resistant to holy damage. The problem with that argument is you could just use Halig Tree Talisman to cut their faith damage, first of all. You also have that, uh, like the faith incantations to boost your uh, faith resist. Plus, faith builds, there's like six types of faith build. You could do a Pyromancer, you could do a Paladin, you could do a Miracle Caster, you could do a Lightning build, you could do Black Flame builds. Uh, you, there's like a lot of types of faith build, there's lots of flavors of faith. Physical damage uh, faith, right? Like the, the Cleric Ship or the, uh, the Beast Cleric ship. So when you do a Faith build, you have access to Flame Art and you have access to like the God Slayer Ultra Greatsword, which destroys these bosses. Like I can kill Radagon in literally 20 seconds in rune level at uh, in New Game Plus 2 because that weapon just shits on them with my Faith build. Or like, yeah, like you can just swap damage types and that goes for strength builds in this game. You have strength infusions and you can buff them with stuff like draw strings and whatever. But you also have, now you can fire infuse it with your strength scaling. So now you have access to fire damage and fucking physical damage. So like, it's just great. Like you have more options within builds. And same thing, that's not even counting that strength now can use magic, if you want. The beast incantations are very useful. Beastial vitality is busted, you know? So like, I, 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 I really hate that complaint. I get it a lot on my video too, that like the people still believe that strength builds are literally unplayable, like literally unplayable in the end game when they are in fact the strongest builds. And that's why I'm trying to do the rune level one plus zero Zweihander run. I'm not trying to say I'm the hot shit and I'm better than everyone at the fucking game. I'm trying to say that literally anyone can do this and the bosses are super consistent with colossal weapons. Like you can do that. I am doing that even now on patch 1.07 where Colossals are, Colossal Swords in particular, are worse than they have ever been. There is no longer a, like you still have the thing where Elden Ring incentivizes you to use the weapon's entire moveset, which is fantastic because I hate R1 spamming in DS3. So it is, so like, yeah, the posture system helps a lot, but there is no more R1, R1 true combos with the Ultra Great Swords and Crouch Poke is gone, which is good because Crouch Poke was broken, but that's going to make it way, 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 way harder for me. And it's still going to be very doable and consistent. So I really hate this like thought that like, like strength builds are really bad because they're not. I think it's just a different way to play that people don't 100% understand. What the f is Elden Ring? Elden this is confusing to me too. Godskin duo that makes no sense. Godskin duo is the worst boss in the game. He's gonna bitch about Elden Stars for like 20 minutes, isn't he? Probably that attack sucks. Radagon Fair enough. Dope -ass fight. Elden Stars sucks, but there's a way to dodge it. Well telegraphed. He teleports all over the place, but in a badass way, not an annoying way because he doesn't have you chasing him down. It's just a way for him to just again. This is more of a joke. <laughs> Dex Bell's got shafted, and then Dex has access to lightning. His brow. Oh, dude, I can't win. You know this guy is like... Sick. That's fair, but I was going in for a joke. Like, dude, it's sick because it looks cool as f***. And like... It's, it's so hard to explain, but... Mm. Uh, this guy literally makes me want to punch my monitor, man. I'm, I'm sure the feeling's mutual. Oh, he's gonna do it again. He's gonna... Okay. Here we go, Chad. Here we go. Start hand about the hitless runners. Now, Again. I'm sure this guy knows better than me when it I do. I mean, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but yeah, this is like a, a little bit of projection on my part again, where it's like, you know, what you call it. It's it's not like <laughs> Quick is getting all the heat for this when it's not necessarily a him problem. I just been encountering this shit all over the place and all the hitless runners, like Nathan, you know. Where people are just like trying to like talk about hitless running when they know nothing about it 
and they're trying to use it to either say that a boss is 100% consistent or like DS3 was 100% consistent because look at this hitless run when it wasn't and like it's just the weirdest shit you know or like hitless runners complain about this boss the game's bullshit yeah that's not gonna affect you unless you're a hitless runner right so it's kind of annoying when they're like oh i want them to nerf radon and like fucking because look it's so hard to hitless run like they don't actually give a shit about hitless running no one does <laughs> i mean not no one but like you know what i mean like they don't care to hitless run so why do they care about it if it's only a problem for hitless running, which it isn't even, we have since overcome that, you know? Like, why why are you bringing up the hitless runner, like the poor hitless runners, right? Yeah, that's what that's why it's just weird to me where the disconnect is. Like, why, why don't we nerf like Godric Storm Assault because the hitless runners have such a hard time? The hitless runners don't have a hard time with Godric because the fucking uh, Storm Assault is fast. It's super reactable. The problem is that his fucking, um, his projectiles get hung up on the tombstones and shit. So like, that's the problem that hitless runners have. So it just seems to me like whenever people bring up the hitless runner argument, when they have never like tried a challenge run at least, or like know much about it, or have talked to hitless runners at least, like it just seems like a weird fucking cop out. And that and that's not like a, just necessarily a quick problem. That's just a problem that I've encountered a lot when a conversation goes that way, where people don't actually know what they're talking about, about hitless running. And even I don't, like, I don't hitless run, but I talk to a lot of hitless runners because I genuinely want to know, especially when I was doing videos where I'm like, is this attack dodgeable or not? I'm not sure. How many ways can you dodge this attack, you know? Is this, like, I, I would ask people, like, is it consistent to do the walk around of Melania and then roll? And people were like, I don't know, maybe. I don't think so, though. And so, like, I would try it and I couldn't get it, so I would just conclude that I guess it's not consistent. But, like, I don't know, so I just go and I ask hitless runners, right? So like, I encourage people to do that. Just literally engage with the hitless community and ask them, like ask what the hitless runners actually think about the game, you know? When it comes to speed running strats and the like, for God's sakes, he does challenge runs. So I hope he does. With that being said, I'm just gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. The thing is, I don't even know that much. I just kind of fucking face roll. Like, like I don't properly learn the bosses. I just kind of do my thing, learn it myself. And if it works, it works. And like for like the falling star beast like i've been doing i hit him in the head to to fucking stagger him because it looks cool but it's inconsistent because he can go off at a weird angle and it'll kill me and also sometimes he doesn't get staggered if you're too close to him so it's super inconsistent i still go for it anyway like i don't go for the most consistent stuff all the time because like i just like to have fun and like do epic cool shit but i don't know the scene as much and the strats required anywhere near where this guy probably does I just like to enjoy the game because I'm just cat. Yeah, like I said, to be fair, this is projection on my part. This is projection. Actually playing these games. Guys, you know, I don't care that much, but you should be able to hit these games relatively. But they want the benefits of it. Yeah, exactly, Nathan. And not using 99% of the game's tools or leveling up in an arc. God, he should have done this shit for the whole video. <laughs> I'm sure you're watching. What? This video Persona? And hey, you made some valid points that I have to absolutely give to you. Like, yes, Torrent, what a stupid idea during the Fire Giant. And, oh, I shouldn't have fought Radon that early. But half your other points that I'm getting shit on for are literally just- Hold on, hold on. Before we roll the outro, I gotta run to the bathroom. Oh, holy shit, I'm gonna pop, dude. Oh, it's just his outro? Oh. So it's, I don't really play Persona, but I've been asked to play it a lot. Not like asked, people are like, you gotta play it. I'm like, I don't know, it's so long. Anyway, whatever. Oh. Uh, all right, let's just wrap this up. You made some valid points that I have to absolutely give to you. Like, yes, Torrent, what a stupid idea during the Fire Giant. And, oh, I shouldn't have fought Radon that early. But half yep. your other points that I'm getting shit on for are literally just because you either didn't care to listen, or maybe you just didn't want to for the sake of content. Uh, I wouldn't say didn't care to listen. I just straight up didn't understand what you were getting at for a lot of it. And then some of it, yeah, was like, I like missed, I don't know, like I missed the point on a few things. Yeah, for sure. But uh, we still disagree on a lot of things, which is fine, because we're just disagreeing about a fucking subjective video game. But obviously, yeah, I was like clowning on him pretty hard, so rightfully he is upset. But whatever. Keep doing you with your channel. I definitely won't be making another video on this topic again. I saw I'm saw. i sorry that I am. I hope this becomes a saga. Fuck no. With that, I've left his channel in the description, so if you want to go check it out, he does Elden Ring Challenge. Ooh, bugs me. And he seems pretty talented at it as well. So if you're into that, be sure to go like and subscribe and check out his stuff.
But before you do that, you gotta like and subscribe to this channel too. I don't make the rules, guys. It's one of the quick reviews, Ten Commandments, okay? Oh! Holy fuck! Oh my god, is my amplifier that high? Holy shit. I'm gonna shit myself. Wow, the, oddly enough, he plugs me at the end. Thanks for that. So, yeah, I guess I ended up nitpicking a little bit more than I wanted to, but uh, I thought, you know, I don't want to make it like a drama saga, but uh, we should at least, we, he deserves to be heard out, you know? He says that I, I like, don't think I took him too far out of context, but definitely the extra context helped a lot in understanding where he was coming from. So I really appreciate that. And like I said, at the end of the day, yeah, I was, I was really exaggerated and clowning. I think he took it a bit seriously, but to be fair, how do you not when like this dude's coming out of left field, just being like, just shitting on your videos and your gameplay. But like I said, we are just making fun of your gameplay a little bit. Do I still think he deserved to be ridiculed for that? Yes. That like, I, I think the, the hot, the hot takes were just really weird and they were pretty humorous, but, and like when you make so many negative videos on a video, I was like, okay, this guy's just a nitpicker and has a weird like rage boner for Elden Ring. But at the end of the day, does he deserve to be like clowned on, on like such a public way where like my video blew up for whatever reason and got like tens of thousands of views. That's an insane thing, right? No one, no one wants that. So it is regrettable in that sense, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm sure, and like I said, it's, uh, we're disagreeing about a video game, even though I did make fun of his videos as well, which is something that you put effort into, but I think that it could be better. Like make more positive themed videos. I don't know. Um, maybe like better clips to support what you're saying. It was, it was true. I was just clowning on him and it was just for goose and gaffs when I didn't actually give any, you know, useful criticisms. Point wasn't really to criticize, but I feel like that is a lot more positive way to go about it, right? Give actual genuinely, uh, genuinely useful, constructive criticism. Yeah, I, I actually do not want to make these videos where I'm roasting other people that much. It's like, because it makes me seem like a fucking asshole, like totally. And I was an asshole. So yeah. But anyway, let's just leave it there. I'm sure he's a great guy. We just disagree about a video game at the end of the day. Like we both like playing games. It's as simple as that. And like I said, we just, I just get like really impassioned about games because at the end of the day, it's meaningless. It's all subjective. So I think it's the only thing worth getting like heated about anyways. So, but you know, some people interpret that as like me being toxic and like going ham. That's fine. I get that. Anyway, let's leave it there. And oddly enough, I am going to 180 and end this on a weirdly sour note. <laughs> I, I know, it's just I, like, I feel like I should talk about it. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but, uh, <laughs> so it's kind of dumb, but we're going to completely end this on a sour note because as it turns out by sheer coincidence, the same day that his video went up, my video got age restricted to 18 only. And if you guys don't know that <laughs> or don't know what that is, it means your video is dead in the water. <laughs> and I thought they were kidding. I mean, I didn't think they were kidding, but like, you don't really understand. Like, it's crazy. It actually just becomes dead. Like, look at, hold on, how do I look at this? Analytics. Look at that. It like hasn't got a single, oh wait, it has gotten a couple of views. Like it just boop, flat lines. <laughs> so it's age restricted. Now, this is not to like get pissy about this, uh, about this video getting age restricted, but I thought it'd be a cool opportunity to talk about how bullshit YouTube's fucking age restriction system is. Because as you guys know, probably you've seen Summoning Salt and Anthony Fantano talking about age restriction uh, being completely fucking broken. The biggest one is the profanity one, right? Because like Summoning Salt had that one clip of someone saying the F word like twice in quick succession and fucking, I like how I just said F word and then I said fucking. And uh, his video got fucking age restricted, which is basically like no money, no views, right? And he's like, this is fucking bullshit. Why can't you be consistent when you look at an angry video game nerd video, which I think that uh, Quick gets a lot of inspiration of. He does a lot of like mannerisms that AV AVGN does where he's like saying rat bastard and shit like that. Like a few expressions he uses. Um, but anyway, like he's like, how does this video have like 10 times the swears and it's, it's good, but mine fucking doesn't. And then you have Anthony Fantano having the same issue, right? So the thing about my video is all the profanity is censored. So the, and YouTube doesn't tell you why a video is age restricted. It just says, fuck you, it's age restricted. So here's our guidelines. 
So I can only assume that it means the targeted harassment and cyberbullying guidelines, which I have read. I have read the guidelines. And because YouTube is vague about how they enforce shit, it doesn't follow their guidelines. The guidelines say protect against people who are being constantly like uh, harassed. And it's like people going on and on and on, making fun of someone for their intrinsic characteristics, like skin color or like a gap in their teeth or something like that, right? Like making fun of someone for their intrin intrinsic characteristics at great length or in the case to protect minors. I did not make fun of quick reviews outside of fucking, um, I referred to the comments where he was called a dipshit because he did get a lot of heat for that video, which he acknowledges and now understands that making knee jerk videos can get a lot of heat, uh, and cause a lot of heat. But, uh, there was that. And then I clowned on his videos, which like I said, if I made 10 videos on Pulp Fiction and they were all negative and just weird and stuff like that, I would get ridiculed too. Like, you know, you get, you will get made fun of. Like, that's just a thing that will happen. That just comes with being vulnerable and putting your art out in a public forum. Like, you can get some of that, right? And, uh, and outside of that, I made fun of his gameplay. So not his intrinsic characteristics, right? So why the fuck is this age restricted? <laughs> so what I did was I appealed it. And they ask you, it's like, how confident are you that this will get appealed? And I'm like, I'm not confident because it's just fucking, it just feels random. And sure enough, the appeal got denied. And so I'm okay showing this because if it was a report, whoever reported it was already notified that it has been age restricted. So to uh, whether it's, and this is not, now, like I said, it is a sheer coincidence. And I honestly think that there is a really high probability that Quick did not report this video because, uh, it's, it, I think they would notify you. Like they would say like your video has been flagged specifically. They didn't say that. So I don't actually know. <clears throat> Holy shit. I need more water. Oh no. Ugh. I think there's just as high of a likelihood that YouTube's bots picked it up or something. Cause if you look at people complaining about age restriction, it just is fucking random. But to whoever it is, if it was someone who reports videos, just reports videos that they don't like for whatever reason or without like reading the community guidelines properly. Or if it's the real human who reviewed my review, uh, fucking age restrict this. Age restrict this, you fucking cretin. Age restrict this, you petty fucking cuck. Age restrict this, you fucking moron. Age restrict that flag this, report this. That's all I have to say about that. No one wants to create drama. It's like I said at the start, it's worse than posting cringe. No one like being at the center of YouTube drama is like, I was actually sick. I was like, oh, when I saw the response thumbnail, I was like, oh God. I'm like, did I start YouTube drama? Like I got fucking heartburn, dude. Like, oh, I was like, fuck. Cause like, honestly, when I made the video, like I said, my videos barely crack a hundred views. Nowadays they're doing a little bit better. Cause I had a couple of videos take off. But like, I did not expect anyone to see that outside of my friends. Like when I started making YouTube videos, like I said, with that Anderson video, uh, I had, when I made that Anderson video, I had 50 subs and they were all my discord friends. <laughs> the only reason I made that video was to show my discord friends. And that's still the reason I make videos. And even when I get comments of like shit, like, uh, the, the video essays are good. Don't make the other shit. Fuck you. I'll make whatever I goddamn want. <laughs> that's the whole point of my YouTube. I'll, I put the whole point of the YouTube was so I could put stuff that I enjoyed from Twitch on there where it wouldn't be deleted, ghost deleted by Twitch and like gone forever, right? So uh, yeah, that was kind of my two cents on the matter. Let's just leave it at that. Don't go comment on quick section unless you want to give them positive, constructive criticism. And don't bother defending me against like idiots like that call me like a toxic man child because that shit's so funny. But uh, like you don't have to white knight for me in like someone else's comments. It's kind of dumb. But like my comment section's fair game. Like you guys know, I like to talk shit in the comments. I have a great time chirping people. It's really fun, especially people where it's clear that they're just like trying to get a dig or like, or they're like not, they're clearly not going into it with like wanting like a, a fair argument or like they're not trying to like argument to like fairly or whatever, uh, or like they're just trying to bait you. It's just so funny to take the piss out of them and just chirp them. I love doing that. Like I said, don't go harass quick or like anyone like that ever. So. I, I think that's everything. I think that's everything I had to say. I probably did it in a lot less concise way and got really rambly, but I might just put this on YouTube just so that quick, like knows that I've seen it. 
knows that I've accepted the shame, the shaming. And also, yeah, you know, he was right about a few things. The extra context went a long way. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Do you guys have any questions? Putting your own response to be a good way to fuse any real beef or just admitting you were drunk in our line. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't want to like just leave it be because it seems weird. It seems like I just put out a, like a video shit on him and I'm just ignoring it. When like, yeah, I feel like he should be heard out. Like, you know, he, he deserves to be like to explain himself add context and deserves to throw a few insults my way and make some jokes can someone actually clip on his video the part where it's like what is that movie it's that vampire movie with vampire hunters directed by george romero i'm pretty sure or no not george romero it's um what am i thought john carpenter it's a john carpenter movie i haven't seen it but the the, the fucking meme that he made where it's like lupine getting like going out into the sunlight <laughs> it's like ah like bursting into flames someone clip that i want to share that it's so funny but, uh, you know, and that was good. It's a, I'm really happy that he insulted me because like, it's good. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for like trading insults a little bit. It's just, it's fucking, it's just part of the fun, you know? Who cares? It's like, oh dude, you're a noob in a video game, you know? It's just trash talk. I, I like that. <laughs> it's so funny with like the Anderson video when I make like little jokes like that, like way less than I went, like way less hard than when I went on quick. And people would be like, oh, you're intellectually dishonest because you insulted his like gameplay. I'm like, yeah, dude, like look at this cringe game. Like he's saying that there's no punish windows and he shows on screen a fucking huge punish window at that exact moment. I'm gonna have a ha ha, dude. And they're like, dude, that's intellectually dishonest. You gotta be objective. And they're just, you know, it's just people that just latch on to buzzwords. So they, they just wanna discredit you. They don't wanna listen to you, right? Oh, logical fallacy. Oh, that's a straw man. You paraphrase what he said. That's a straw man. Oh, you're straw manning. It's so cringe, you know? Intellectually dishonest, objectivism. It's fucking memes. It's total memes as, as far as uh, internet discourse goes. Like, I feel like it, they've lost all meaning at this point. <laughs> wow, you cope. You're coping, bro. Nice fanboy. You unironically enjoy a video game despite its shortcomings? Wow, fanboy. Wow, you can't even admit the game's bad? Wow, cope. Cope harder. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, you know? You're such a fucking clown. Anyway, let's get back to playing Eldrin. Wow, that took forever. How long was that? How have I been live for five hours? Hey, what's up, Stochastic? I walked out of boss idling and swung and got punished. Two out of ten dog shit game. Joseph Anderson. Exactly. You were halfway through the video when I first popped in, and that was two hours and 20 into the stream. Oh my god. Well, whatever. We don't want to take him out of context, so we're not going to.